five. <laughs> Let me know when you guys can hear us, all right? You know the drill. Hi there from the toilet at my work. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Filed under things I didn't need to know today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Can you guys hear us? Or are you are you sitting through an ad? Probably sitting through an ad. Well, I am because I'm a good person. <laughs> ah, yes. You guys let us know when you see us. All good. I can hear you. Yep. Can see in here. All right. That's enough for me. Here we go. Welcome back. Oh, wow. Hello, everybody. We've got some people uh, from across the pond. We've got, wow, we've got people from all over. So this is great. Uh, maybe some of you uh, in Europe are over attending Munich or something. So perfect diversion on my road trip, Seattle to San Francisco. Well, we are glad for that. So thank you all for joining us. We'll be uh, entertaining you for the next two hours. So if you have some questions, be sure to get those at the ready. We're going to let a couple of other people here uh, join in and then uh, we will get started. Greetings from the Netherlands. Nice. Hello from Italy. Well, hello. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Let me pull up the, here we go. You guys still rocking that TCL TV? Uh, we are, we are, we are still rocking the 98 inch, uh, TCL. Uh, rumor has it that it might have to come down in about two weeks because another TV is coming in for review that needs that spot on the wall. But, uh, yeah. I don't, we don't have the packing material for it, wink, so uh, you might be seeing the 98 once that review is up. But yes, we are still using it. Uh, I'm excited for the Sony X93L. So are we. <laughs> so are we. So are we. I hear a lot of good things. And about that TCL, they just announced, uh, I think towards the end of this year, the 98 inch that we have is getting a mini LED, uh, a mini LED uh, update. And so we have obviously already said that we have got to, you know, give that a look-see. Uh, all right. Let's see here. A couple of questions. So that was Nick. Hi, Nick. Hope all is well. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. All righty. Let me turn. Okay. I think I am all, oh, I, I think I'm all set up. I think I've got everything together. I'm doing better at this, I think. Uh, 2ND writes, any plans to review the new Onkyo TX RZ70? Obviously, the RZ70 is the new model that is the, it's not really an update for, to the RZ50. It's actually, it's, it's a whole new thing, similar to the Pioneer 805 and the new Integra that has uh, also been released. And from what we were told um, when we got a press briefing detailing the RZ70 and and Pioneer and all that was that um, those are like kind of like brand new designs that the um, the new owners uh, really had a hand in. So we do have a plan to review the RZ70. You are going to get the Pioneer first though. I don't know exactly what day that is, uh, but it is coming up. Um, so look for that. Uh, da, 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 da. Ezra writes, how do you, how do your Cornwall four stack up with everything you review overall? Well, they stack up very well. They can, the Cornwalls are definitely a speaker that you can affect, you know, um, it, it does not interact with the room as much, very similar to say 8,000 F Mark twos and things like that, where you get really good linear mid range and, and like treble clarity without too many room interactions, but you can definitely tighten that speaker up with room correction or EQ, which is something that I do. And when you do that, um, it, it matters. It makes a big difference and it can really take that speaker to the next level. So, uh, 
da, 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 da. let's see here did I miss something okay um, <laughs> Bodie McBoat Boatface do you still have the space behind the TV we do we do that little uh, hole that fits 80 up to 87 inch televisions uh, is still there uh, we had to kind of modify it temporarily to have the 98 inch TCL cover it but yeah we still have it it's still there and from what I understand the new TV that's coming will go back into that uh, recess so let's see here uh, oh Bob have you guys ever reviewed a UST projector we have we have we've done a couple I think we've done three now I think we've done a total of three short ultra short throw projectors and we've done one uh, standard throw and um, the ultra short throws we did we did the LG two two LGs I think and one Samsung uh, Premier and then we did the Epson uh, 4k uh, standard throw and we're probably not going to do any more projectors on this channel right now or for the time being I don't think ultra short throw projectors are the bee's knees and if you do a search after this live stream if you do a search on our channel um, for those reviews we go into great detail as to some of the pitfalls that I feel the industry is sort of kind of I don't want to say glossing over but they're definitely attempting to um, make sure that consumers aren't aware of or aren't quite as aware of um, the idea that an ultra short throw projector is a television or can replace a TV just like that um, it's not really accurate and it's not really a fair uh, statement so that's why we not only have we brought that up in reviews but that's why we're kind of limited on projectors is it just doesn't really make sense for the way that we like to you know watch movies and enjoy content regularly okay now I realize I've rambled and I've missed a couple of super chats here so let me catch up uh, I be crazy thank you for the super chat I don't see a question attached to it so it's a good time to make that announcement yeah guys if you're gonna leave a super chat obviously we do get a number of these and so we answer super chats first but make sure to attach your question uh, to said super chat so I be crazy if you had a question for me uh, please just write it you don't have to super chat us again just go ahead and write it at me uh, at Christy and we'll get it up on screen so we can get you an answer and if you didn't have a question I just really appreciate your support so Absolutely. thank you thank you very much uh, Alex um, do you think Kevin from upscale audio would send you a pair of new Tannoy Sterling threes also general thoughts on Omni I'm assuming omnidirectional speakers like German physics I think um, I think people or represented representatives of Kevin from Upscale Audio would likely uh, send us Tanoys if we were to request them. Um, I know that we we have made contact with them in the past, and they are aware, and we're now aware that if we want to do uh, certain reviews like with Tanoy, that we're going to go through them. Um, yeah, I don't think that would be an issue. We just have to we just have to request it. So when this live stream's over. If you guys are like, hey, we would like to see a Tannoy review, leave a comment down below after you like this video, after you like this video, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Then leave us a comment going thumbs up for Tannoy or please do Tannoy reviews, and that will let us know that you're ready for you know some Tannoy reviews. So, But no, I, I don't believe that it would be a problem. Um, general thoughts on omnidirectional speakers like German physics. It has been so long. Um, since I've heard those speakers I honestly I don't want to speculate I, I remember the last time I heard him I was at a trade show and I thought pretty highly of him to be honest um, but I have I don't have any current or um, I just don't have any current experience with them at the moment but thank you very much Alex for your support uh, Harry writes you both know the audience well on the channel anything you would love to review but you don't think there is a viewership or interest for it um I think early on like three years ago there seemed to be a bit more interest in turntables and I did kind of enjoy doing those um, I think the markets just sort of moved um, a little bit onto I don't know if they moved on to DAX or everyone kind of picked up the turntable that they wanted so that kind of market died down a little bit 
Um, I don't know. To be honest, if I wanted to talk about a topic that was different than what we normally bring you um, and the stuff that you guys asked for, it probably wouldn't be so hi-fi related. Um, but I would still want you guys to come along for the ride. And I had an idea for a video that I might do maybe in July or August um, that will test the waters with experimenting with a couple of different topics in one video. And maybe if I, if I can manage to be a halfway decent writer, I can figure out a way to weave the story together where you're getting a review, but you're also getting a little bit of a different video. Um, and of course, obviously, um, I always threaten to do more home decor and interior design stuff. And so that's always a big interest to me. And you guys so far have come along for the ride, but uh, we'll have to see. Thank you, Harry. Uh, let's see here. There was Harry Bodie, Bodie McBoface. Why are there variances from TV panel to TV panel if they are manufactured in a factory? It's not like that with other electronics. It actually is. It actually is. There, I mean, there's variance, there's variations in any kind of device that involves parts, you know, parts and moving pieces. And every one has, you know, their acceptable windows of, of tolerances. The, the thing that I have always kind of, I've been told and I've been shown. So it's not just, oh, one guy told me this and I, I took, took their word for it. Um, one of the things that I've been told and sh later shown with displays is that there are so many little things that, can have, that go into not only the brightness, but the colors and this and that. And then it comes down to, are you LED, are you mini LED, are you OLED, are you this? And each way, uh, each, each lighting technique and, and way of displaying an image has its own technology behind it. And there can be dozens or hundreds or thousands of parts that are, all have to come together to do that. And for the most part, they always come together in a way that is at least within tolerances. But just because, you know, if you get 50 TVs from the same brand, you know, let's just say 50 TCLs, right? And they're all the same. And you set them all to cinema, you plug them into the same type of a power source, um, and you run the same measurements just out of the box. It's not uncommon to, out of 100, you know, yeah, maybe 25, 30% of them don't fall within spec or just barely make it within tolerances for what TCL allows. Um, and then there might be, you know, 30, 40 pieces that measure exactly the same. But we can't definitively say like, yeah, everything is always the same when it's made in a factory. You have to kind of give yourself that wiggle room, which is why, you know, if you want to make sure that your particular display is showing exactly, you know, SMPTE or, you know, Dolby or whatever, you know, HDR standard in terms of contrast, light output, um, color space, etc., you have to calibrate. Otherwise, you or you just have to be okay or comfortable with the idea that from the factory, maybe you're getting 95% of the way there or 90% of the way there, which honestly is really good. We've come a long way. We've come a long way from back when I started to calibrate TVs. Uh, and, you know, every display was just wildly different from the next. So it is getting better, but I would hesitate or I would urge people caution in thinking that, you know, we've solved it because I haven't seen evidence of that just yet. Uh, Bri Brobot. Uh, Brobot. Hello, Andrew and Christy. Can you review some of those new GAN FET amps that are digital direct connect, no RCA, like the peach tree? Um, sure. Sure, I uh, I would have to ask for them, and so far that has not happened. But that's not because anyone at Peachtree or their representatives wouldn't happily send us something if we wanted to take a look at it. Honestly, it's on my radar. It's something that I am aware of, and so yes, I think there is an opportunity or a possibility down the road before maybe the end of the year where we might take a look at that because it is it is something kind of new and. I really do want to experience some Peachtree products. The last one we had, unfortunately, um, and I don't blame Peachtree for this, um, but the last one that we had arrived, I believe damaged, which is why you've never seen it on the, on the show. Um, and we just got busy and just, you know, sometimes the, some things fall through the cracks, but uh, no, I, I, I would love to take a look at that. I really would. Uh, Arkham. 
Ar- or, sorry, not Arkham. Oh my gosh, I apologize. <laughs> Did you just call somebody a brand? <laughs> no, no, Arkham. I, I, it's it almost looks like the spelling of the Batman, uh, the comic book Batman Arkham, which is a, I think a prison. So my apologies. Um, hey Andrew and Christy, I love your channel and sending you guys love from Egypt. Oh, wow. that's nice. Uh, I hope you were convinced to do a part two video. Uh, for subwoofer EQ. Also, any chance you'd review the Monoprice B6? Okay, we were convinced to do a part two. So part two is coming, I believe. Um, you're you're welcome to hold me to this to a degree. I believe it's on the schedule for the next 30 to 45 days. So I think it's coming out sometime in and around there. Uh, any chance you would review the Monoprice B6? I'd have to Google that. I'm not fully familiar with that speaker. Um, I would never say no to a monoprice opportunity, um, so long as you know everything was on the up and up. So, as with any, as with any brand, uh, we are Switzerland. We're open. So, I guess when we're done with this live stream, I'll have to I'll have to Google Google the monoprice B6 and figure out what's what. Is the Monoprice the speaker that Caleb over at Digital Trends just reviewed? Is that Monoprice? I think that's the brand he reviewed. That's the brand. I don't. I think it was a tower, tower or something. I'm not sure though. Okay. Uh, I see a couple of you are shouting for Tannoy. <laughs> we have. We, we didn't hear from them, did we? It was Totem. We heard from Totem, but no, we had a conversation with Tannoy because one of the um, former marketing people from. Oralic now works for, I think, Upscale Audio. Was it the same guy that we dealt with, with at, at or- Oralic? I thought it was. And he contacted us? Yeah. Wait, yeah. no. Oh, I'm thinking of something else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of LTA. Never mind. Never yeah. mind. Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, little inside baseball for you guys. <laughs> um, so here we go. Johnny. Hi from Norway. Love your videos. Keep up the good works, you too. Well, thank you. We we appreciate it. We really enjoy bringing these to you. And, you know, we, I don't know, we like hanging out with all you guys. And you keep it fun. So I love that. Uh, Glenn, having an issue. Okay. Having an issue with my A4A, that's a Yamaha. When I turn on the receiver in surround sound, receiver shuts down. I've checked all of the cables. Your thoughts? Huh. Um. <laughs> I'm going to assume that you have an HDMI connection, in which case, if CEC is engaged, it's possible. It's possible one or more of your other HDMI connected devices is setting or maybe set improperly with respect to its CEC, which could, while everything else is turning on, it's getting triggered to send an off command through HDMI, which is then shutting stuff down. That's one maybe potential possibility. Outside of that, it could just be defective, in which case I I, I couldn't help you there. But just whenever I hear of powering up procedures not going according to plan, I typically go to the CEC commands first and know that you're going to have to go to the CEC commands on the Yamaha, your television, and any other device that may be connected uh, to the Yamaha or even to your television via HDMI. So double check all of those settings. If something is on or off or different from what it needs to be, experiment there and see if that doesn't uh, help solve your problem. Just really quickly, yeah. it was I be crazy who had the super chat earlier that had no question. Correct. Okay. Well, just for the record, mm-hmm. for the permanent record, as mm-hmm. our ladies, our friends over at uh, I've had it would mm-hmm. say, <laughs> mm-hmm. I did at him mm-hmm. or her and ask to please at me with your question. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm I'm out here. Waiting. Oh, you're waiting. Okay. Yeah, so I, I just I... want. I haven't seen it. So if you don't type it to me, I, I can't. I can't help. Okay, so anyway, just, we're on the just, we're on the lookout. Yeah. All right, uh, Joe, have to put bookshelf speakers on a cabinet in my living room and getting some resonance. Any suggestions for decoupling solutions that don't look awful? Um. Okay. 
decoupling solutions that don't look awful. Well, if your bookshelf speakers have threaded inserts on the bottom, like let's say for instance, you have uh, Klipsch 600 and Mark IIs, those have threaded inserts on the bottom for Klipsch stands. A lot of BMW speakers have threaded inserts. If you have threaded inserts uh, for decoupling, um, you could go with isoacoustic uh, feet. I know a lot of people are probably like, you put isoacoustic feet on bookshelf speakers, but you can, and that would help. They also, isoacoustics as a brand, makes a number of decoupling um, platforms and solutions like that. Now, whether or not you think they're attractive, that's a totally different conversation. Um, but those work. And I, I say that they work from a decoupling standpoint because in my more professional side, when I used to work with recording studios and sound mixing studios, um, we use those religiously. And a company that I'm very familiar with, um, Argosy Consoles, they make high-end mixing consoles. I know that they use isoacoustic uh, products on all of their professional uh, monitor mount uh, pieces that they use for all of their consoles and mixing boards. So isoacoustics really is kind of there, uh, the gold standard as far as I'm concerned. Um, let's see, another alternative would be Oralex. Oral, yeah, Oralex. Oralex. Um, they have some more basic platforms for subwoofers and speakers. You could give those a shot. I don't I think they work. Uh, let's just get one thing out of the way. They do work. I don't think they work quite as well. Like I've still heard a couple of, you know, little vibrations uh, make it through some of their products. Again, this is going back a few years. Um, but I would start there. I would start there knowing that Oralex is going to be more affordable, probably a couple hundred bucks, not even maybe, maybe 60, 70 bucks for their solution. Whereas Isoacoustic can go anywhere from say $100 to really almost the sky's the limit. So those would be my recommendations. CRM just spent two hours with a sound engineer. Woohoo! Setting up my Heresy 4s with my new mini DSP SHD added a sub. Your show really helped me to do some advanced work and understand the process. Thanks so much. Oh my gosh, that is, that's awesome. That's awesome. I love that. Um, if you don't mind, CRM, if you're still here and, and watching this, I'm waiting for my neighbor with the Harley to finish driving by. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, uh, I think he's he's done some work on his bike uh anyway uh, apologies for the interruption there he he won't apologize but I'll, I'll apologize on his behalf um if you don't mind i would love to know what sound engineer or if, if it can be public who you used or who you went through or what service and what their takeaway was um because i'm i'm always eager to see like you know, how close, you know, we get in the consumer realm to, you know, professional results. I, I know the, the few times that I worked with like Bob Hodas in tuning some Meyer sound stuff way, way back in the day, you know, I always would uh, watch him go to work and then I'd sit down with my, you know, my mini DSP stuff and be like, all right, let's, let's see how, 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 how close can I get? Um, so that's, that's always a fun procedure. So I, I really appreciate you letting us know that. That's great. Uh, Dustin, hi, first thank you for being vulnerable and sharing those important messages in some of your personal videos. Oh, well thank you, I, I hope they help. Uh, any recommendations for behind the screen speakers? Was looking at B&W Custom, oh, if you were already looking at B&W Custom Theaters, you named my number one, one of my three top picks, uh, CT7 or CT800 series. I love, love, love those speakers for acoustically transparent screens. I, they're so good, especially in that kind of a setup. Um, if you wanted to do something similar to say CT700s on a little bit more of a budget, if you're in the US, if you're in Europe, you may have a way easier time sourcing this stuff, but if you're in the US, and I'm assuming based on your super chat that you are, uh, you may be able to still get your hands on the magnet THX speaker series. Um, there might be a couple of pieces still floating around new. 
Um, just do like a Google search for Magnet. Um, not as good as the BMW CT700 series, but very respectable, very respectable. Um, JBL 3677s are professional theater speakers. Those aren't made anymore. Um, so probably the only place you're gonna find those is eBay, but you need a big room. You need a big room for that. Uh, so no, the BMWs are great, man. They really are. So, uh, let's see. Oh, no. oh, darn it, it jumped on me again. Always does that. All right, where was I? Um, sorry guys, I apologize. Dustin, Dustin, okay. Samuel, hey Andrew and Christy, how do you both find new music? Recommendations in a bit of a drought right now and Spotify algorithm, it just ain't hitting. Oh man, well honestly, I find new music all the time because of the Apple Music, you know, suggested playlists. We've been, there's a, there's a chill lounge playlist that we do. I do piano chill all the time. Um, there's a jazz, uh, lounge jazz or smooth jazz. You've picked up, there's a chill, Apple Music chill oh, playlist. Oh, yeah, I love that playlist, and they update it. Every week. Like, I think at least once a once week. Once a week, yeah. And so you're going to get, um, you're going to get exposed to different music, different music every time. Um, and a lot of times I will look up an artist that I know I like, and then based on that, there will be similar artists recommended. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to fall down rabbit holes. Apple Music also, and no, we're not sponsored by Apple Music. Uh, I but wish. we should be. <laughs> uh, it, once you start listening to certain music, it will then create like kind of a playlist or a radio station for Just you. Just for you, yeah. Based off of the things that you tend to listen to. Yeah. And that is how we ultimately get exposed to new things. Mm -hmm. Maybe Twitter, I get some, you know, I if yeah. I, I see people talking about a, a new band or an album or a TV show and mm -hmm. I'll you know Google it and go from there. What playlist did you just find though? It was like sad. Was it sad bangers? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was terrible. What are you talking about? Well, I, I mean, some of it was okay. Oh, I love it. But it, it was it was no, it wasn't terrible. I'm thinking of something else. Apologies. You found, a, you found a world music one that was maybe, was a bit weird. Maybe. I don't remember which one it was. Yeah. It wasn't Sad Bangers. So Sad Bangers is perfect for people like me who do not pay attention to the lyrics and just get enthralled by the awesome beat. So <laughs> if that's you, check out Sad Bangers. On Apple Music. <laughs> but yeah, that's how we, that's how we find, uh, find some stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit pause right there because it is now two thirty, and speaking of content and playlists, and playlists, <laughs> uh, this video is sponsored by Cambridge Audio. You guys, literally, you're always asking, as in just a moment ago, what is the most important part of an well, this whole live stream you've been asking, what's the most important part of an audio system? And if you ask Cambridge, they're going to tell you that it's it's not. It's not the latest network player, amplifier, DAC, or turntable. It's the music. Which, if you ask me, that's that's what this whole hobby is really about, right? We are, we're really all here because we love the music. So Cambridge Audio has a brand new podcast series called Made by Music, and they've collaborated with some of the best artists and producers in the world. Now, the first three episodes, they're already available now. And they feature Pink Floyd bassist Guy Pratt. They've got Boy George and Norman Cook, one of my favorites, AKA Fat Boy Slim. And there are new episodes of Made by Music dropping every two weeks. So if you want something else to listen to after the live stream, go give Made by Music podcast from Cambridge Audio a listen on Spotify. Just go to Spotify and go ahead and search Made by Music. So we wanna thank today's live stream sponsor uh made by music and cambridge audio for that so thank you very much yeah it sounds really cool and yeah they, they are they have you can go look at it af obviously after the after stream after this stream you don't want to step away yeah but they they already have like a couple of episodes Three out. Are up so. i started i got one i started i haven't finished it yet but uh it's it's good stuff it really really is so if you ever we always talk about like artist intent and stuff like that like here's here's some insight Here's some insight. So go check that out. Uh, Spotify made by music. All right. Back to the show. Back to the show. All right. We have, uh, let's see, Nick 
Movie AV Impulse question. What are your favorite mafia and gangster movies of all time? And what was the number one movie surround sound wise that really wowed you and Christy? Uh, oh my gosh. You answer. <laughs> I'm okay. Uh, I'm reading the question. My favorite mafia gangster movie of all time. I'm kind of torn. I'm kind of torn because you know that I like New World, which is a Korean film that I realized that maybe you and I are the only ones on this uh, stream right now that have seen it or heard of it. Um, so I do like New World. I also really like Godfather 2. I know that's a bit cliche. Um, Goodfellas is great. Goodfellas is one of my favorites. Goodfellas is fantastic. And also, I don't know if this counts, would Reservoir Dogs count? Um, gangster, yeah, yeah, it would, it would. I would, and I would put Reservoir Dogs up there. Um, I really would. As for what was the number one movie surround sound wise that really got you wowed? Well, I can tell you the first movie I ever heard in surround sound at in a house was Top Gun in 1985. I guess it would have been 1986 by the time it hit VHS. And I heard it on a Bose Acoustamass uh, 5, 5 5.1 or Dolby Surround uh, set up at my uncle's house. And I was hooked. I mean, that was just, I just mainlined entertainment. Just boom, it's hooked. Um, the first time that I ever personally put together a system that made me literally break out into like a, like a sweat because I had just, every time you build your first home theater, you're not you don't really worry about accuracy you worry about just like can i crack the foundation um i was 16 or 17 16 years old or maybe 15 and i got my i i had had the movie for a minute but i i put together a speaker system around some jbls and we watched my my buddy and i we watched twister and it just we probably watched it to the point where we were melting the drivers but uh it was impressive it was a lot of fun do you have a answer for nick for the first first surround sound movie that like floored you oh my gosh honestly i don't remember that would have had to have been in like a traditional theater okay and I, I have no idea <laughs> um i mean probably when i was a kid something like star wars oh yeah you know i saw those like return of the jedi in the theaters when they first came out yeah um but here i mean we kind of have in my opinion yeah a better sounding system i would agree than even at least the last couple of theaters we've oh been gosh. to <laughs> just oh there aren't what they used to be uh, now i sound like a <laughs> an audio file a true audio yeah. file um i don't know like the top gun maverick Which, the new one yeah yeah i think it sounded amazing on the kefs yeah um, we just uh, uh christy's family is in town they're actually staying with us and uh was it Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, like first thing we did, they wanted to watch a movie. And so we fired up uh, Top Gun Maverick. We had the Kef R11s. We had the Sony, Sony 7000 ES and all our Klipsch uh, surrounds and our Klipsch subwoofers. And uh, I've seen that movie about a hundred times now. And uh, I enjoyed the hell out of oh, it. Oh, it was awesome. And it was so much fun watching my dad. Uh, experience home ex theater. Yeah. It both yeah. him and my mom experienced yeah. something like that. This in the house, plus on the you know the big the TCL, TCL yeah. you know they were. I know he especially was floored. I mean, I kind of can thank my dad for my love of music mm -hmm. growing up. You know he he always had a, a system and yeah, um, it was a modest one, but some you know he always had speakers and mm -hmm. you know this gigantic satellite TV in the backyard <laughs> that was so obnoxious. Uh, but yeah, I. It was fun to see his reaction. Yeah, you and I both. It was watched, like a kid. You and I both watched them just about as much as we watched the movie. Yeah. So, uh, Vadim, hope everyone is having fun. Oh, we are. Any thoughts on the new Macintosh LM1 Mark II speakers? For oh, I didn't know they were twelve grand a pair. Uh, it looks cool, old school, but the price is eye watering. Would be cool to see a review. I literally learned of those speakers this morning when I woke up on Instagram. I believe that they were unveiled at Munich. Um, very, very much a, a direct uh, copy of the old school look from back in the day. 
Uh, I did not know that they were $12,000 a pair. Uh, that, uh, whew, that, that one stings. That one stings a little. I would happily review them, though. I would. I would happily review them. You guys know that I'm typically a pretty big fan of, uh, of Macintosh. So I, I think they're interesting. I think they're interesting. Um, I'm curious how they modernized them. So, but yeah, I would, I'd be interested. Let's... There's a lot of great movie answers back to that question. Like, what was your first uh -huh. um, surround sound experience? Dan Dolphin says Close Encounters of the Ooh. Third Kind. Yeah. Um, Robert yeah. Bonilla says, in a, well, in addition to Top Gun being his, his first, he also enjoyed Filth, Fifth Element, which I know you love that. Yeah. You, you've used it as a test. Yeah, I've used Fifth Element. Uh, you want another one that's good that a lot of people don't turn to. Um, Crimson Tide, a Tony oh. Scott movie from uh, mid to late 90s. Crimson Tide is fantastic for surround sound. I know most people go U571 and I'm like, no, no, you gotta, you gotta, gotta branch out. You know, I remember in the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, every home theater demo was the depth charge scene from U571. And it's a good, it's a good scene. Don't get me wrong. But Crimson Tide's got some, got some heat. So, uh, and Heat, there's another movie that is a great surround sound. Are they remaking that? They are. They're making a sequel. Okay. Not. I don't. I don't think it's a remake. It's a sequel. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, thank you so much. I don't see a question here. So same same as uh, last. If you meant to ask a question, please at Christy with your question. We'll we'll keep a lookout for it. But if you just wanted to say thank you, we really do appreciate that. CRM, is there a switcher for a subwoofer with one RCA jack? I have one subwoofer serving my stereo and separate 5.1 system, tired of swapping cables. I have one subwoofer. Um, I'm sure there is. I'm sure that there are switchers that would do that. I unfortunately, I unfortunately don't know of any off the top of my head with the exception of you could do it with I think you could now I'm gonna have to experiment with this uh, I think you could do it with a mini DSP 2x4 um, EQ and then buy the uh, the optional remote control and just save one subwoofer to preset one and save the other subwoofer configuration of preset two, that may let you do it. Ooh, good question. Now I have to, hmm. I think that would be how I would tackle it and would give you all this parametric EQ capability. Hey, speaking of subwoofers, mm -hmm. somebody in the comments asked a question that I was gonna to try to answer them, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, is it something about putting a subwoofer underneath a couch? They saw it on a Yamo video or something, and is that a gimmick, or would you recommend doing that? I mean, you can do whatever you want. I know that Yamo makes a slim, or they, yeah, they make a slim uh, subwoofer, and I know that we've had one and used it on the channel. Um, none of our sofas have actually been high enough to allow for it to slide under the sofa. Um, would I do it? You know, I might experiment with it, but I likely would never use that subwoofer as my primary, if that makes sense. I would always set up a subwoofer properly in the room for best bass response, but I could see myself maybe if I wanted to be a bit mad scientist, uh, using a slim subwoofer like that under the couch just for that more tactile sort of physical feeling, if you will, if it can even do that, I, I don't know. Um, but I don't, I don't think that I would recommend that you just grab a subwoofer and slide it under your couch because you can. The I, person I just found their question, uh -huh. and they it apparently it was on actually on Yamo's website. Yeah, oh, I'm sure that's what they designed it for, and because uh -huh. marketing wise, you know, to be able to tell people like, "Ooh, you can slide it under your couch and hide it." Um, I, I just, I don't know how well that would work beyond, well, I, you get the sensation perhaps that you get to feel it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Bodhi says, the super chat is limited to 50 characters. My question will follow. So I, I, 
Like, oh, here it is. Yeah, I don't know. Bodhi, how excited about Technic's upcoming streamer integrated with HDMI Arc? Not no meters, but it still has my interest. Um, I'm actually very excited to learn more about it. I'm a little bit surprised given kind of how in contact Technics as a brand has been with us over the years that we weren't even told about it on release day. That's another product that I found out about because of you guys. Uh, I woke up to a bunch of DMs about, you know, what do you think of the, the new Technics piece? And I had to Google it because I was like, what are they talking about? The 700 Mark II, we just did it. And no, there's this whole other thing and it has HDMI. And, and so I would love to give it a shot. I'd love to hear it. Um, and but Technics did not tell us anything about it, so unfortunately, I can't tell you anything more about it than what uh, you probably already know. But if they were to say, "Hey, we want to send you a sample to review for the channel," you know, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> you guys should let them know if you want to see stuff. Because yeah, because obvious. Sometimes you have the more power than we do. <laughs> uh, Nathan Bell, just for fun, just for fun. Okay. You're building a 4.1 system using MagnaPan speakers. Which Maggies are you using with which receiver, processor, amp, sub, and room size? Okay, well, I can tell you this. If I am building a MagnaPan-based home theater, I'm not using a receiver because you're going to melt most of them. Um, MagnaPans are a speaker that require separates, or they require a receiver acting as a preamp connected to a separate amplifier. The last time I had Maggie's in a home theater configuration, I had MagnaPan 3.6s up front, left and right mains. I had their uh, center channel at that time, which was part of, I believe, the MMG line. And I had a pair of MMGs as the surrounds. And it was a five, it was a five dot one system. The subwoofers were Velodyne, I think. And I ran those with Parasound separates, Parasound Halo, the big one, the 200 watt times five, and the C1 processor. So those are both, the C1 processor is not available anymore, but the, the big boy five channel amp still is. Um, and it wasn't until I put the 3.5s on Pass Labs X350.5, I think it was, um, that I really felt like I was hearing those speakers to their fullest potential. In the room that I was in when I was doing that, was 15 ish wide by 30 long with 12 foot ceilings. So if I was going to build a MagnaPan home theater, I would just go for it. I would go all in, get the big boys and know that I needed gobs of power uh, to, to make it really work. Good question though. I did like that theater. I got to be honest. I did like that theater. It sounded really good. So, good question, love it. Uh, KC, thank you. In the market for a TV, a seven, 70 to 77 inches for movies and gaming, PS5. Recommendations, please. Okay, if you want the absolute best picture quality um, and you're either willing to have it calibrated um, or you're pretty well versed in maybe how to get the most out of it. Uh, LG's OLEDs are still the best, in my opinion, and they're great for gaming. Now, if you're like, well, I need also maximum light output, um, the new Sony mini LED displays are also fabulous. Um, Samsung I think their their OLED now reaches up to 75. It's going to be very bright, arguably one of the brightest OLEDs on the on the market. Um I just there's something about the Samsung like I'm it's so weird. Like I am mar I marvel at it, you know? Like I'm like, wow, this is technically brilliant. But I just never fall in love with the image. It's weird. It's so weird. And I realize it is 100% like a personal thing with me. So I, I'm still going to go if it's like you're going for reference, best gaming, everything. Uh, in my opinion, I still haven't really found anything that beats our LG uh, C2 or G2 OLEDs. Um, but if you want maximum light output with some good gaming features, or you know, really good gaming features, the Sony Mini LED 
lines are also very, very good in that regard. So thank you, Casey. Really appreciate the support. Jerome, when it comes to the law of di uh, okay, when it comes to the law of diminishing returns, where a product doesn't have to be that expensive to be sonically good, where do I draw the line? Well, I think the Polk R700s really kind of prove what's possible um, at that two thousand dollar mark, because you you legit have to kind of go up to something along the lines of like the R11 Meta to really have this sort of okay, like demonstrably different experience. Because everything un before the Metas arrived, you know, I could sit there and say, oh, you know, the Martin Logans are a better speaker. The Martin Logan Motions, the new ones, the 100s, are a better speaker than the Polks. But there was always something like with the Polks too that you're like, well, but I could live with this at $2,000 versus spending 4,500, if that makes any sense. Whereas the R11s are like literally the first speaker since we got our Polk R700s where I'm like, okay, this is notably better. And now the R11 metas have set a new law of diminishing returns. And I know that they're expensive speakers. Do not think for one second. I'm like six, seven grand a pair. That's where the law of, no, 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 no. But for me, I think if you're, if you have up to $2,000 to spend, it takes having to spend probably seven grand in my experience to then go to that next level. And then seven grand to beat that, who boy, these, these metas really do make that conversation really tough, you know, because I can even point to some $10,000 speakers, which are only three grand more expensive and go, there's not a big Delta there. There's not a big difference. Um, so at that point, I think if you're going to try and find something above meta, you're, whew, you're probably making car payments, you know, <laughs> yeah. at that point. I, and I'm, I'm not saying that to be hyperbolic. I'm, I'm just saying that from experience, like these really like the R 700s, the metas, the R 700s, they really do become true benchmarks in a lot of ways. And not to say that there aren't other speakers that are similar benchmarks, you know, like concept fifties great speaker now does it do everything an r700 does at a three grand a pair versus two grand for the r700 no it doesn't have the base the r700 does but it's also a good speaker and one that you can say well at three grand you probably don't need any more for a lot of people but the r700 and this new r11 meta they are hmm, almost perfection um but now that i think about it the R200 bookshelf set at 649 or 749 a pair for a bookshelf speaker. Again, very similar. Those things have gone toe to toe with bookshelves too, two and $2,500 a pair. In fact, we've even preferred those over things that should be better, you know? So that's kind of where I'm at. JC, I'm curious about your thoughts on the mini DSP SHD as a preamp. Any gains to be found with a separate one? Is it a quality preamp? Also, Christy is killing it with answering questions in the chat. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. 90% uh, of the time um, when I have the mini DSP SHD out in our system, I am using it exclusively as a preamp. I don't employ another preamp uh, on top of it because, in my opinion, it is the best preamp that I have run across this side of spending like really ridiculous money. Um, yes, it is digital, and yes, there is some D, D to A and A to D conversion that goes on, but it's done so well, and it has such startling transparency and, and you know low distortion and stuff that I have no problems relying on it as a as a standalone preamp. And if it had an HDMI connection, Mini DSP, if you're watching. If the SHD had an HDMI connection, it probably would never get. Uh, Dis, uh, disconnected really truly I, I just it's such a powerful piece that at 12 or 1400 bucks whatever it is uh, now I, I don't remember off the top of my head it's such a powerful piece that it makes you really look at other preamps and go step it up you know you got direct you've got streaming capability you've got a DAC you know digital connections it doesn't have a built-in phono preamp and it doesn't have um, HDMI but if it had HDMI Oh, game, over. game over it is a good preamp 
It's one of the only, oh, also one of the few preamps that I trust to put in front of my deckware because it really doesn't change the sound of the deckware at all. And that is an amp that I never want to change the sound of. So do with that information what you want. Uh, Chad just bought a Cambridge AXA35. Please tell me how smart I am. <laughs> Thank you for the validation. Secondly, how do I select a separate DAC? I don't need volume or tone controls because that is what the AXA35 is for. Well, um, believe it or not, I'm not the biggest fan of like standalone DACs. I, if a product offers it internally, I'm typically pretty happy with it. A DAC has to really go out of its way to be pretty crap uh, for me not to just use whatever's internal. Um, that said, one of the few standalone DACs that I actually really like is the Cambridge Audio DAC Magic. Um, the new one, the, the 200M, I think it is. Granted, I know it does have the ability to have volume control, but you don't have to use it. Uh, it's fabulous. And it's like $400, $399, dollars four, $400. Um, it's great. It really is good. The other DAC that I like that does not have any sort of controls whatsoever, and I, I have it sitting in there. I'm, I don't have it plugged in at the moment because we're rocking a receiver. Um, is the Shit Audio Modi 3, I think is what it is, the Modi 3. It's $169. It's just a little silver box. Oh, the one you reviewed? The one I reviewed like two Austin? years ago. I still have it. I still have it. And I, I, I find no reason to change it. I really, I really don't. Um, I can tell you not the biggest fan of SMSL DAX. Every single one that we've had and that I've bought to try and see what all the fuss was about, um, they've all failed. They have all failed, and now they're taking up space in my garage. Um, other standalone DAX. I mean, you can go crazy. You can go crazy. That I mean, again, I'm assuming because we're pairing it with an AXA35, we're trying to keep trying to keep our feet on the ground. But for anyone watching who's like, well, that's great for an AXA35, but I have blah, blah, blah. Um, I thought the Oralec, the Oralec DAC streamer situation, you know, their products, those were, ooh, those were good. But I'm not saying you've got to spend $5,000 per piece to achieve similar levels of fidelity. I mean, Maybe you do to achieve exact levels of fidelity, but I think you could probably get, you know, 90% of the way there, if not 95% of the way there with a, a Modi 3 or a, a DAC Magic. And I, as far as the DAC Magics are concerned, I can at least vouch for their longevity. I've had, a, I've had some form of DAC Magic DAC in my system for the past 15 years, going all the way back to their original. So I'm pretty keen on those. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh oh, I'm gonna. I don't want to butcher a name. Can you help me with this one? While uh, I take a quick drink. Uh, Cyprian. Cyprian. Uh, Sardu. All right. That's. If we got it wrong, we always we're, apologize. We're sorry. All right. Hi. I own a pair of Rotel 1582. Oh. Uh, I own Start a, over. <laughs> I own a Rotel 1582 and a Cambridge CXN V2. I use the CXN preamp function. Will I notice a significant difference using a dedicated preamp? If so, any recommendations? Um, Speakers are Focal Aria 926. No, I don't think so. I, I think I, I look at the CXN V2 as a preamp myself. Um, the only, the, I mean, at least from Cambridge, the only other piece that they've made that I have believed to be notably different and in some instances you may view that as better um was the cambridge edge preamp streamer which is i think the elevated version of what you have um, the edge preamp streamer uh, is one of the best preamps i i've ever used it's beautiful has hdmi um, it is expensive though it is expensive at four or five grand just for the preamp um, but if you like the Cambridge CXN V2, but you're looking to go a little bit better or whatnot, um, that would be a great place to go and keep it in the family, so to speak. But do you need to, given everything else that you're describing? I don't think so. 
I, I, I don't. I don't think you I don't think you do. So Oh wait, real quick, Martin Vegas asks, Do you miss your Sim 2 M150? If I still had a dedicated theater every day of the week. But because I no longer have a dedicated theater and I'm not really interested in having a dedicated theater. Um no, I don't. But that was a damn good projector and it was sexy. Black glass, square, beautiful, big Fujinon lens. Oh, well, oh, Martin's a Martin's an OG. He yeah. goes back. You know the you know about the M150, man. I oof. Uh, thanks to the article from you in 2019, I bought the Monitor Audio Silver 300s uh, 6G for thousand dollars a pair, new in box. Love them paired to Rotel 1572 Mark II and Rotel 1552 Mark II spinning Project X2. Keep up the great work. Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. You got it. Silver 300s, $1,000 a pair, new in box. That's great. That's awesome. So I appreciate it, Michael. Thanks for letting us know that we were, you know, we were able to help in some way. I, I really do appreciate that. Uh, now I'm thinking about these that projector uh cr you would love to see magnapan lrs plus review i would love i would love to bring you a magnapan review i would um the last one i did though i'm i'm gonna keep it at 100 uh magnapan the, the powers that be over at magnapan sure as hell did not enjoy my last review of their product they did not like it at all they didn't like that I used some of their audiophile, more audiophile oriented speakers for home theater and they really didn't like my choice in music and that I played uh, Nirvana's Nevermind as one of my music demos uh, on 3.6s to evaluate them. Uh, I, uh, I, I think I got a strongly worded letter um, that uh, this was going back, this is going back years, but I, I have nothing against Magnapan. They're one of those brands, you know what they are? Magnapan is one of those brands for me where I've owned them six times in my 20 year professional career. MMGs, 3.6, 1.6s, uh, MG12s, and I had MMGWs at one point. And um, I always sell them. And then like the day after I sell them, I go, man, I kind of miss their sound. And then I'll go buy another pair. Or I'll, I'll I'll stock eBay for like six months until someone's basically giving away a pair for free. And then I'll get them. I'll have them for like a year. And I'll be like, man, these are great, but uh, you know I don't listen to them enough, or they just need so much power. And then I sell them, and I'm like, ah, darn it. Uh, so yeah, they're they're like one of my favorite love hate relationships in hi-fi. And I'm, and I hope that doesn't come across, or if anyone from Magnapan is watching this, like, see, he's going to be biased. No, I actually really like your product. It's just a very interesting one, and uh, I can see the allure. Trust me, I can see the allure. Ah, Chris Veltman, Unity Adam, amazing, forty n, incredible, six thousand a play. Eh. You take that back, Chris. <laughs> you take that back. What? Uh, my question, is there a current streaming amplifier that you would ha be happy with 15 years from now? A forever amp, if you will. Thanks and be well. I mean, um, honestly, if the Unity Atom didn't have two limita three limitations in my mind. One, it needed a separate subwoofer out from its preamp outs, number one. Number two, if it had just a little bit more power so it was truly more versatile with more types of speakers, even though it's 40 watts, punches plenty hard. It does. It, I've, the, the, the Atom has embarrassed 100 watt amplifiers. Let's just call it what it is. And if it didn't have the noise floor when paired with my Klipsch speakers, I'd probably still have it. You know, I probably would because that is arguably still one of the most beautiful pieces and one of my favorite, just easy to use, always sounded good, uh, love it. Um, we did reach out to Name uh, last week or week before because um, we want to do some more Name stuff and I believe the new Classic line is now officially kind of out. And so we, I haven't solidified anything. This is a preview for you good people watching. 
Um, but uh, we will be bringing some more name products uh, to the channel and I'm hopeful that maybe, I know it's not going to be a Unity Atom replacement, but I'm hopeful to have that same kind of experience because I really, really did like their product. The 40N is fabulous. Um, the 40N is ultimately what you know got us to kind of replace the Atom. Um, uh, 6000A Play, look, the 6000A Play, the weakest part about it, in my opinion, is the PlayFi, is the way you stream to it. Um, and I A pointed, lot of people don't like it. And I pointed that out in our review. Like, if you're fine with PlayFi, 6000A is going to do it for you, 6000A Play. But if you're like, oh, God, I hate PlayFi, it's like, well, <laughs> that's a good portion of the streaming on this. Um, a forever amp. Boy, gosh, that Yamaha, that that two thousand N that we just did, that we still have. Yeah, what about it? That's pretty. That was pretty good. Um, Wait for like over a forever, the uni, Unity Atom, or as a replacement? Or as something? a replacement, like I could live with that because it has room correction, has HDMI. It's uh, music cast for streaming, which again, some people may have opinions on. It's a solid unit, man. It's really good. Uh, no. I'm, you I'm, didn't like the neutrality of it. No, I really don't. Um, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine and it's a pretty piece, um, but I would get some. I would get something from the audio, from Audio Lab. I just prefer that sound and I think- With the 7,000. We were talking, we're talking to Chris right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Chris. I know you like the sound of the Unity Atom, and I think you would enjoy the Audio Lab sound better than Yamaha's because they're more similar. Yeah. Than the the I'm talking about the the name and the Audio Lab have, yeah. I, in my opinion, a more so yeah, I a would, more I comparable would, sound. I'll go with you on that. Yeah. So, but if you like that laid back stuff, go with the Yamaha. <laughs> I'm gonna have to disagree with her on it. It's not. I mean, it's just. It's 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 near as makes no difference. It's just flat. It's, it's just and not flat like a negative way. It's just it is. It's just the sound, you know. So. Oh, hold up a minute. Hands oh. of Magic eighty nine. What's Wait. it? What's the finish like on the R eleven Metas on video? It looks a bit cheap. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> I await your apology. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice. It's good. It's look, if you're not a fan of gloss finishes, uh, trust me, I'm I get it. I'm right there with you. I'm not the biggest fan either. Um but a lot of piano gloss finishes, even at the four, five thousand, six thousand dollar level, have things like orange peel or even some spider web spider webbing, and you car guys will know exactly what I'm talking about. This is near as makes no difference a sheet of ice. It's it's smooth, man. It's really good. It's really good. And if you don't like the 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 white finish, I hear you guys tell me all the time or in that video a lot of people were commenting like we haven't lived until we've seen the new walnut uh that the R11's in. And I'll take your word for it cuz I haven't seen it, but there are other options. And if you go down the line from what I understand, into more of the bookshelves or the smaller towers, there's colors too. There's like a blue or a, like a bluish purple that I know at first glance, probably or first hearing that goes, oh, I don't want that, but it looks pretty sharp. Han mm -hmm. says uh, they look plasticky, but I, in my opinion, that I think that of all gloss speakers. I would agree with you on that. But, you know, I'm not gonna, you're, you know what, you are right. If I, in my opinion, gloss speakers tend to look cheaper. Mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of people that think gloss is where it's at mm -hmm. and that it's maybe it's because it's traditional mm -hmm. and they they think it looks expensive. I, I feel the exact opposite, but that's, I'll go with that's you. just me. I'll go with you on the finish. I think the finish could be nicer if they had gone more of like a pearl satin. think there's a Porsche, the 911 Porsche's custom... Porsche's custom colors and Audi's custom colors, they have this white and it's kind of got a pearl undertone to it. Like if you were to do that on the R11, I would be, oh, okay, that that would be better. Would it pick up on camera? Ooh, I don't know. But uh, the finish is pretty good. 
John Doe, visited the Boulder Amplifier Factory last week. If you haven't had the privilege, I highly recommend it. Just awesome. And is that... Wait, it's an Boulder? amplifier, Boulder Amplifier. Not Boulder, Colorado? Well, they're in Boulder. Oh, are they? Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Um, I have not been to their factory, but I have uh, been around their products at trade shows and media events um, when they've shown the full exploded view and I think years ago they had one amp and you know they're doing like a raffle to like guess the weight um, and this thing was massive I mean just massive the, the amp was bordering on the size of the table that's where we've got all our gear on so it I'm well aware of, of Boulder they're crazy over engineered but boy their stuff sounds good expensive <laughs> <laughs> it's very expensive. Nathaniel, love my system. That's partially your fault. Man, I just hate it. I hate it so much when you guys are happy with our recommendations. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing ticks me off more than to hear that we had a good time with something. So we said we had a feeling you would have a good time with it. And it turns out you're having a good time. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to change my LS50 metas, uh, Cambridge, CXNV2, CX80. Okay, don't want to change my LS50 metas, Cambridge, CXNV2, and CXA81. Thoughts on a cheap signal processor for movies. Signal processor for movies. So you want to add um, surround, you want to add like, huh. so like a 2.0? Two, 2 so you just need a DAC? But you already have a DAC. Nathaniel, I need you to come back. Don't super chat again, but I need you to at Christy. Try and explain your question. At Christy Wright. You got to say Christy the whole Wright. thing yeah, or at I Christy won't Wright. Um, and please try and explain what it is you're trying to do again because I'm, I'm not understanding your question. So please do that because uh, I want to answer this because I'm, I'm curious now. I really am. Uh, Aries, what are your thoughts on definitive technology speakers or other speakers with integrated subs? Aries, you will find the answer to that in our definitive technology bipolar, or, or sorry, they're called the new Dimension series now. You will, you will find that in our Dimension series review that came out probably last month or maybe it's been two months now. Uh, we go in deep on not only what I think of deaf tech, but what I think of speakers with integrated powered subwoofers. So I would encourage you to check that out because you'll get a much better answer than what I can toss out right now. I'll, I'll drop a link in the, uh, to yeah. that review okay. in the comments. Philip, I'm curious. If you could set up the Bowers and Wilkins Formation Duo with other Flex BMW speakers to create the ultimate surround sound for movies. I'm curious if you could set up uh, I have the Marantz SR8015 receiver to assist with the setup. Um, I know at one point in talking with B&W representatives, and this is going back now three years when we did the formation duo, the roadmap was always to allow for them to work in unison with each other and other formation type products, but I don't believe that you were going to need a separate receiver or processor to do it but I don't know if that ever came to fruition huh um, I don't know if it's possible and to and if it is possible how they're implementing it because I have not been around the formation products in probably two years and so I do not want to give you uh, wrong information sorry um, gosh I, I feel I feel bad because I want to give you a, an answer answer. And unfortunately, I just don't have one to give you. Um, can we jump to a different super chat real quick? or uh, Sure. Or look for my name at the very bottom mm -hmm. where it says at Bork. Or... Yes, I see. Okay. Uh, would you, don't worry. Uh, we're going to go back. We're going to rewind the tape. We'll Pulp Fiction it. Would combining a Sennheiser Ambio Max with two SVS 3000 micros be a good idea for a living room home theater setup, or would you rather go for a serious set of floor standards, large room, 15 by 30? Ooh. I mean, you have a big room, you know, you do. Um, 
Can the Sennheiser with subs fill a space that large? 100%, 100%. Will it do as good of a job? I mean, let's, let's just look at it financially. Uh, Sennheiser Ambio Max is still three grand, right? Um, I will be- uh, I think it's three grand, and each of those subs are eight, $900 a piece. So you're talking around a $5,000 investment. At five thousand bucks, there's the max is twenty five hundred dollars. So twenty five plus nine and nine, eighteen. Okay, well, I mean, if you want simplicity and you want one hundred eighty degrees surround sound, assuming you have, or almost three hundred sixty degrees surround sound, assuming you have parallel walls and low enough ceilings, I mean, it's hard to fault. It really is hard to fault. Could you do? better with a serious set of floor standards? I mean, for stereo, for sure. Would it give you quite the surround sound? No, but your room is so big. Your room is large, so, ooh, this one's tough. This one's tough. I wouldn't, I, look, I wouldn't steer you away from the combination you are describing. I think you would be pretty happy and it will work in a room that size. It absolutely will, especially with the base being augmented by subwoofers. Um, but if it were me in a room that size, I would probably go with separate speakers. That's just me. I would too. Not to take anything away from the Sennheiser, because that is a great piece. Um, okay, Peter, I said we were gonna come back to you. Have an Onkyo RZ50, Bauer and Bowers and Wilkins in ceiling and a sub, thinking of Polk R100s for shelf. Space is limited. Would Dirac cover for Boomy Bass if I went bigger on a bookshelf speaker? Um, well, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't. It all depends if you, if you let Dirac do the crossover, it might cross things over a little low where you're still gonna get some bass coming out of those bookshelves, in which case I think the Polk R100s and 200s for that matter are rear ported. And if you have to place them on a shelf, uh, I'm assuming that means they're going to be close to a wall, and so the possibility for some boom is still there. But if you were to cross them over high enough, um, it could basically just cut all that out. But honestly, in this instance, with BMW in ceilings and a sub, and you need a speaker that's really going to work close to a wall, I would look at the Arendal 1961 bookshelves because they're sealed. It's a two-way speaker. They're excellent, very similar in in linearity and neutrality compared, you know, compared to the Polks. You can put them right up against a wall. In fact, they even have mounts that come with the speaker to mount them to a wall, and they sound exceptional. Um, and they would probably pair very well. I know they pair very well with an RZ50, but they would sonically pair very well with the BMW and, and a sub. So maybe look at those. I wouldn't look at a rear ported speaker just all things considered, nothing against the Polks, but I just wouldn't look at a rear rear ported speaker if you knew uh, they're gonna be that close to the wall because they're gonna be on the shelf. Bodhi, so do you think I'd be good with an SHD between the pre-out main jacks of my Macintosh 6700? Pre-out main jacks. Um, yeah, I think you could if if that if the pre-out main jacks work the same as say what the Audio Lab seven thousand and nine thousand and six thousand allow for similar concept. Uh, yeah, give it a shot. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's a lot of fun, and it is a way that and I have found at least with like the seven thousand and the nine thousand, you can pretty much just perfect. You can take what's great about those two Audio Lab pieces and then just pretty much perfect whatever speaker is connected to them that way. So if, as long as the Macintosh 6700 pre-out main situation is the same or works similarly to Audio Lab, and you're gonna have to look in the manual for that to double check me. But if it were to do that, absolutely go to town. It's a lot of fun. Mr. J, wow, Mr. J, thank you. Hi again, <laughs> just visited the dealer that all speakers in wall, okay, just visited a dealer that all speakers in wall for home theater setup, including front and center. I had not considered front and center in wall, building a 5.1.2 setup. Any concerns long-term? 
Some of the best theaters I have ever put together for myself actually used in-wall speakers, but I went hog wild and I got like really good in-wall speakers. My favorite in-wall speaker of all time is unfortunately not made anymore. And that was the Meridian, uh, Meridian 300 or 800 series. They were passive, believe it or not. They were passive in-walls. They were true three-way in-walls with, you know, uh, ribbon tweeters sitting between two mid-range drivers with two woofers and they had a full aluminum backing box and they just sounded great the problem with those is you could not retrofit install them you had to take your room down to the studs and drill them into the studs and then lay your drywall um, but if you're willing to do that oh they were so good i want to say when they were new seven or eight grand each um, like I said, they're not made anymore. That said, I believe the Kef R line has a whole line of in-walls that I believe also just got THX certified, which for an in-wall is something. Um, I would try them. Um, B&W has some pretty high-end in-walls that I've liked in the past, but I probably go more Kef now. Um, just knowing how much I love these. Um, yeah, I, in my opinion, I think you can get great results with an in-wall speaker. I really do. I just think that you have to, you know, when it comes to the left, center, right, like really, really do your research and really get a good one. Uh, Paradigm, uh, back in the Signature Series, they made great in-walls. Um, I hear good things about the Martin Logan in walls. I hear some of them are like just absolute monsters, but yeah, you can totally, totally get a killer home theater with in walls and do really well for stereo as well. So uh, Nick is back. Now I have to know how many companies without saying their names have told you that you reviewed something wrong. <laughs> oh, I'll... We don't have time. <laughs> 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 that I have reviewed something wrong. Well, which one? Oh, Magnapan said that I they weren't happy with my review because I didn't use real music. Um, well, SVS said that we reviewed their stuff wrong because I showed the speaker on the wrong side of a cabinet in our B-roll. And when I had to explain to them that that's just for illustrative purposes and they were actually tested a dozen different ways... Um, they were like, oh, my bad. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. But then um, they said... But then they said, you yeah, know, if you don't say nice things about us, just send our stuff back. And we were like, later. Um, we're paraphrasing, but that's the gist. That's the gist. That is not direct quotes. Um, hmm, who else has said I've reviewed their product wrong? Or we oh. didn't understand it. You just didn't understand it. LTA said oh. we, we didn't understand their product. I'm <laughs> like, there's not much to understand. Rotel wasn't happy about our Michi review. No, they were fine with the Michi review. Rotel did not like our diamond oh, review. Our, our brief diamond mention. The diamond mention. <laughs> um, they didn't like that. Oh, the what was it? The uh, what we called the the logo, the diamond thing. Oh, we thing? <laughs> we referred to the logo as being. Kind of like a look like it looked it looked i believe we said it looked like silk screen or it looked like a sticker and they must have kept us on the phone for about a half an hour about how that just wasn't the case and i'm like well then make what it was nicer it was like etched or something they claim it's etched i'm telling know. you it looks like a damn Who sticker cares? um yeah they put plastic that or we said they put plasticky fins on it and then they were like they're not plastic well they felt plastic okay how long did we spend on the phone with Oh, we must have spent 30 or 40 minutes on the phone with them. Just all the ways that no, we just... I was going to say, we spent a long time on the phone. And this was the biggest surprise with somebody from Klipsch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys know I'm, I'm, I like Klipsch speakers. I do. So pick my jaw off the floor when one of the big wigs over there... Uh, needed to speak with me before, you know, we went any further. Um, and in our conversation, which full disclosure, from my perspective anyway, I don't think it went well. Um, <laughs> Christy just, just 
head, so, yes, head and palms. S- suddenly regretting even bringing <laughs> it up. Um, but no, no, like ultimately as we were talking, like we both realized like we were completely saying the same things. I guess I just didn't say them with the big enough smile on my face. I don't know. Uh, obviously, you know, we have no ill feelings towards Klipsch and the people over there are, are great. But yeah, that one was kind of, um, that one was kind of interesting to like get a, get an email being like, Hey, we need to talk. I'm like, really? Uh, wow. But most, most of the, most of the brands are pretty hands off because yeah, we, we we're require them to yeah. be that way. Yeah. I mean, someone asked earlier about the blue sound, whatever the new edge Mm. Node or something. I can. I know they just released something. Mm-hmm. And Whoa. what'd you just do? I hit a button. My apologies. Oh my god! Just went in the dark. Um, <laughs> and the parent company requires like an hour, a minimum of like an hour long meeting before they'll even consider sending out any sending anything for review. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I mean, gosh, we've been reviewing their products for a long time and. And to be asked to do that now is was kind of odd. Yeah. But to commit an hour to something and not even know if we're going to get it afterwards, it's like, who has time for that? Yeah. So anyway, if you're wondering why you don't see a lot of NAD, Blue Sound reviews, people that that, brand, that parent company reps, it's because... They're really trying to make reviewers audition to like get yeah. their gear. Yeah. And you want to know... What? What are you about to you drop? guys you want you want some tea <laughs> because honestly i just wish I, I i do i just wish companies would just make their thing make their widget stand behind it but samsung is now like basically trying this new strategy where they're like you've got to go to their turf if you want to talk about their products and i'm just I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of that. And it's like... Oh, yeah. We just got an invitation. That's, that's funny. That's what they call it. An invitation. invitation. Yeah. From... Not from... The, we have different people at Samsung that we deal with. And this is from somebody new that I've, we've never spoken to before. Like some agencies out of somewhere. And they wanted us to come to California for this in-person, you know review opportunity for the, yeah. for a sound bar and, yeah. a, and a TV and in and they offered to pay Which in exchange yeah. for a a review mm. and a uh, oh and also a short was um hopeful in the ask mm. or in the deliverables and i mean guys and gals <laughs> um we don't do that we can't do that yeah we 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 can't go to your home turf, let you, and then you pay us. And then, but also they're like, you know, you'll, you'll have to, you'll have a window where you'll get to do this. Oh, and, and plus exclusivity. And, we want, like, and then they want exclusivity to be able to take the video that we create as a result of this and then use it for their purposes. And, that's and we like, can't talk about competitor, com- competitive brands, brands for a certain time period. Yeah, it was insane. Around, and it's like, I kind of was wondering, does, does Samsung like the people we speak to even know that this is happening. Yeah. Um, but for a sound bar, especially, yeah. I mean, I just think it's ridiculous. And I got to say, before any of you that just hear that story, before you don some tinfoil hats and go, oh, you know, sounds like they've got an ax to grind. You need to know something. Last Sunday, using the Bank of Robinson, we bought a Samsung television for our for our home. The frame. For the, the, the frame. We bought a frame at full retail at Best Buy. So this is I, I again I, I have nothing against I have nothing against Samsung. I have everything against them for this type of a, you know, asking reviewers to do this because I don't believe it is fair and I don't believe that it reflects a real world review. But I have nothing against the brand. So I'm not we're not saying this to And it's not just Samsung. Yeah. It, the other brands have wanted to do similar um things, I think, to probably cut down on the cost of sending out products mm-hmm. or something. I don't know. I I I honestly and I'm gonna put on my tinfoil hat, I do believe that they want to have some aspect of control yeah. over the environment. 
well, that yeah. the review is taking place. And plus, you're only given a you're going to only be given a limited amount of time to perform your testing and to film things that you might need to film. Because let's face it, they have sent this invitation out to a bunch of people. Yeah, you could be you could be waiting in a hallway in line with six seven of other creators in our space and yeah you're all going to end up with kind of the same video and it's all going to look the same and i mean at that point yeah you're even as an audience you're going to be like am i really getting real information and you're justified in that instance yeah to to question it you are so we're not participating i guess that's our long-winded way of saying we're not doing it um and i guess we're just gonna have to buy some stuff but that was weird. That's a weird one. That's starting to happen more and more, that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, new question. Juan, I am happy to hear that you are possibly getting some name products. I have a Supernate 3 plus a Node plus Lumina 5s, and it sounds incredible. I've listened to Sonus Faber Olympica Nova 2 and SN3s, and they're even better. I think... Uh, I think I probably get... I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb. I say I, I think I get at least six, if not ten, DMs per day over on Instagram. When are we gonna do Sonus Faber like higher end line? Like when are we gonna do Sonus Faber oh. higher end line? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I love that you guys love that brand. I love it too. We just had the Luminas out not too long ago. Um, I'm happy to review, you know any product that they 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 want to offer up for evaluation but they've been kind of they've just been quiet. well i mean honestly I, they've been quiet the, lately the person that we a lot of brands hire marketing agencies mm -hmm. or they have an internal marketing person who handles review samples and things like that of that nature with people like us or online or mm -hmm. print publications and uh, they're the ones that are typically sending out press releases and, you know, then you talk to them directly about what you might want. Mm -hmm. And I know that the person that used to be that individual at the Macintosh group, right? Samiko group or, or Macintosh yeah, group. Yeah, whatever. Um, they change their name all the time. That person departed the company and I think they left kind of short on a short notice. And so... I think maybe the last I heard, I think they were still kind of working out who was going to handle what yeah. um, to replace that person. So that was a couple of months ago, at least. But we, we haven't, haven't followed up. They haven't followed haven't, up, but we haven't followed uh, up. We haven't either. heard anything. Yeah. I mean, I don't look. I if somebody is in that role and that's their job, mm -hmm. I personally find it's their job to stay on top of stuff like that. Like I don't have time to chase stuff down and yeah. i and i not that i don't or i'm opposed to doing it and i try mm -hmm. but i mean like anybody else like i get busy and caught up with other things and you yeah. know i like i said if you want your product talked about then contact us please yeah that's it uh you new super chat question you recommend kefs over klh threes for home theater was it lack of surrounds in the line? How important is voice matching? Suggestions to mix and match brands and ohms. I don't recall bringing up the KLH3s in the Kef review. I don't either. But maybe the... he's talking. Definitely not in the meta review. Oh, no. Are you talking? Maybe maybe we brought them up in the 750, the Q review? Q750? I want to say we brought up the threes and maybe it was like the Martin Logan. B one hundred. I something? don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll. I'll say this. I'll say this much. I would recommend Kef over the KLH threes. Yes. Um, as for why it wasn't a lack of surrounds, because as you guys know, our surrounds rarely ever match what we have in the front three, because we our surrounds are permanently installed. They're they're Klipsch in ceiling speakers. So unless we're reviewing, say, Klipsch speakers, or we just have our our Heresy 4s or our Cornwall 4s out, we're always mixing and matching brands. Um, when it comes to surrounds, I'm not too picky. I know there's this is probably going to get me in some hot water and someone's going to make a video. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't worry too much about the surrounds matching the mains. I do care about all of the surrounds matching. 
You know what I mean? Like, so Atmos and surrounds and back channels. I think if you can get all of those to match, at least you're going to have a better, a better time than just having everything be so jumbled. Um, I do think it's important to try and match relative sensitivity and impedances, ohms, if you can, because that's just going to make stuff a little bit easier on your amplifier and receiver or whatever. Um, so if you're going to mix and match your front three, you want to go with one brand and you want your surrounds and whatnot to be a different brand. I would say keep your front three in the, in family and then keep all of your surrounds in family and then do your best to keep the sensitivities and the impedances relatively aligned between the two different brands. Um, and you should be fine. And then if you, impl if you use Odyssey or Dirac on top of it, that's going to kind of really hammer out any real de any real deviation so you should be you should be fine uh philip which one which one better which one would be the better receiver for movie surround 8015 or cinema 40 both around the same price tag we had the cinema 50 the cinema 40 is above the cinema 50 and if I'm not mistaken, the Cinema 40 is near as makes no difference, kind of an 8015 with the new tech, the new hotness. Um, so I'm going to just say at this point, if you're going with an 8015, you know it's being discounted because it's, it's quote, old tech. Um, so I would say go with the 40 if they're around the same price tag. I really would because there's more flexibility and options that you're going to you're going to have. So um Scott, thank you for becoming a member. Fly in 99. Hi guys. I own 8000 Fs due to your review. Would the Yamo S810 subs play well with these or no since the frequency shows to be lower on the clips just looking at matching wood grain finish? And Yamo looks to have such. I don't think the 810s, if memory serves, I believe the 810s are the thin subs. The Yamo S810s. Keep talking, I'll tell um, you. Christy's going to double check me on this. I believe the S810s are those subs. Um, and if they are, I don't know how much you're going to notice their presence. It's those. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much you're going to notice their presence if combined with, say, an 8000F. Um, not to say that they're they're not gonna have a presence, but it might be mild. Um, Yamo does make a bigger sub, it, in that same black finish, but doesn't have the little wood trim, which is a nice touch. Doesn't have the gray heather grill or the black heather grill, which is a nice touch. Um, boy, 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 boy. Here's the problem I have with subwoofers. You know, it's like there aren't sexy subs unless you're really spending a lot of money i i gotta say the new rp the reference premier subwoofer line we have the 1000 which is the baby of the line although i use the word baby in quotes because it's still huge but it's good it's so good it's really really good that is a great pair with the 8000 f's but if you're trying to save on space, because the Yamo SA10 is one of those slim subs, uh, I mean, you're not going to save space with the RP1000. But that would be the sub that I would recommend, and it would match the finish of the 8000s. It really would. So, um, yeah, there you go. Has Klipsch updated their app yet? On the sevens, based on our original five review. Uh, the app was updated. Now, obviously, we had a lot of time off there between our fives review and the seven slash nine review. So I don't know at what point that app got updated. So maybe this is maybe what I experienced in the sevens and the nines was the update of the update. But it was updated from my last experience with it. Uh, but I have not played with any of their sound bars to see if those have been updated. So that I can't say. I I, I want to say they have. I want to say they have. Donkey. Onkyo 7100 versus Sony 1000AN. Which one to get? 71 has Dirac Live, but the Sony 360 technology is so tempting. I know, man. Oh, I'm right there with you because they're both great, but they're both great for very different reasons. 
Um, if I'm not mistaken, the 7100 has preamp outs. Can you look that up for me? What, what do you the want? The Onkyo 7100. The NR? NR7100. Just double check me. I believe the 7100 and the RZ50 are basically kind of the same piece, give or take a couple of watts. Uh, what, I'm sorry. Preamp I'm... outs on the 7100. Okay. How the, many? Do you see preamp oh, outs? Oh, I don't know. On the back I, panel? I'm just. <laughs> do I? We I... are a well oiled machine today. <laughs> uh, let me let me ooh, two zone two stereo no, preamp outs. No, no. What do you want? Hold on. What Just you... stop, stop. Don't touch. Don't touch. Don't, don't touch. Eleven point two. Oh wait. No. Oh shoot. What just happened? I just like pull up the photo of the back panel. Okay. Well, <laughs> where'd it go? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so no. All right. Um, well, shoot. It doesn't have preamps? It doesn't have preamp outs. Because that would have been the thing that it's like, if memory served, with 7100 had preamp outs, maybe you go with that over the Sony uh, for flexibility down the road. But it doesn't have that. That one's tough, man. Oh, that's tough. You just name like my two workhorse receivers, the new Sonys and the Onkyos, you know? But it says it has zone two stereo. That's, that's zone two. That's that's like you want to put something like outside or in a separate bedroom. Why it, would they it, do that but not give you? Don't, you're, you are going down a whole other new rabbit hole. And thank you for <laughs> making the last 30 minutes of this chat, this live stream to be about, <laughs> well, actually, guys, you, you'll know that. <laughs> I can't make that call for you because, look, we I love Onkyo. I love our RZ50 and I love that line. And and for the most part, I've been really happy with even their sister brands. But then, you know, the other day we put our 7,000 back into this system and I'm like- At my request. At Christie's request, she's like, let's let's grab the 7,000. And I was like, yeah, let's let's do that. And I'll be damned, man, if that just, if the thing just doesn't hit a little harder. And the 1,000 was kind of the same way, very much like the old Sony 1080, where it's just like, I'm not gonna say that it's just better but there's something about what Sony does that you're like, damn, if that just doesn't, mm. It's so good. It did, uh, yeah, it really is. So I want to be able to give you a straightforward answer, but I'm afraid you've caught me right at my, like, it really is going to depend on the day where I where I fall. Uh, let's see here. Wishbone, thank you for being a member. Best speaker setup for untreated space and random listening position. Lots of of base wait lots of glass tough space Ooh, you might be really well served i know this is going to sound weird but you might be pretty well served with something like eclipse 600m mark ii something with a little bit of that horn waveguide to kind of control directivity might not play with the room as much um boy yeah, I mean that. At our recent our recent experience with like the eight thousand F Mark II's really did kind of shine light on just the flexibility of that platform. Now that doesn't mean that you're gonna like the tone of them. You know the 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 the, the tone of the speakers themselves. You may find like oh I don't like that forward sound or I'm putting them in a glass box so the forward maybe that little forward sound they already have is gonna get worse. Um, but they're not gonna interact with the room quite as much as some speakers. So you might just grab the tone controls on your receiver or something, treble down, you know, negative three dB and that's the fix, you know? So, but yeah, maybe that's the way to go. Uh, ABX audio file. Hey guys, glad to see y'all live. First, what's the cocktail or drink there? And second, are you looking at Ever Solo Streamer DAC? Looking at the Ever Solo Streamer DAC. Well, this is watermelon juice. Watermelon Just lemonade. Watermelon lemonade. From Whole Foods. From Whole Foods. Apologize for the plane overhead. Nothing fancy. Just fancied myself a watermelon lemonade. Um, are you looking at the Ever Solo streamer? No. 
<laughs> but that's only because I've What's never I've never solo? heard of it. Who was ever solo? I know. Now I have to Google it. Oh, hey, ABX. Yeah. Somehow my feed keeps keeps getting behind. Oh. I keep having to click oh. on live and to catch up. It's kind of annoying. Okay. Well, yeah. I I as soon as the stream is over, this is something that we're gonna note, and I'm gonna have to Google that because I. I genuinely have no idea what you're talking about, so I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, you must know every brand. I know. Benji, what are some good ABR amp processor pairings for those R-series speakers behind you? Been thinking of getting. Uh, in the Marantz AV10 uh, Amp 10 review we just did, what was it, last Sunday, we talk about other alternative pairings that work very well with these speakers. Everything from, you know, pairing Cinema 50 receivers, preamp outs to say an Emotiva amp, um, and other various things that we tried with these particular speakers. And you're going to find all of those comparisons, uh, as well as our full review of the Marantz AV10 and Amp10, or yeah, Amp10. Um, in that video. So just when this is over, after we wave goodbye, uh, go back and watch that. And I think you're gonna find a number of possibilities at like a lot of different uh, price points. Speaking of over, we have about 15 minutes. Okay, 15 I think, minutes. Left. Yeah. Uh, Mike, road. That will be two hours yeah. of a live stream. Wait, hold on guys. Mike, I promise. Uh, do I wanna do this? I just, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this comment. Um, what are you talking about? Um, oh God, against my better judgment, pre rich, you're you say glad you guys are putting these things out. Maybe people at an unnamed site will stop questioning your integrity. Oh, I can. I, 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 what is he talking about? Well, I bet they have like a couple of letters in their website name if i had to take one guess oh i mean there's so we, there's a plenty of people that are don't. we getting are we getting hate again <laughs> has it been a day <laughs> has it been two days already? 24 hours has it been 24 are we getting hate again you know what we need why what do you we know need? what we need we need one of those accident signs that says yeah it's been this, this many days <laughs> it's been this many days since someone decided to just hate hate you oh man we'd be constantly oh, wow. updating it to like zero. can i get a can i get a nickel <laughs> for every time i find out from one of you guys that someone hates us oh my gosh um pre i i clicked on your comment because i honestly i'm i i don't look i don't want to get into drama or anything but i i guess i misread your comment or something but i was like wait someone's saying what and oh look there's always people that say we're getting paid and we're not. Yeah. We've never taken a dime from, from anybody to do a review. Yeah. We disclose when we have sponsorships, like in this particular video. Mm -hmm. um, and we we appreciate that. If a if a company wants to support us, that's awesome. And you yeah. guys should be happy for that. Yeah. Um uh yes, we earn money off of AdSense, if you'd like to know just how that works. It takes well, I mean, you Wait, no, it takes a thousand views. The first thousand before views. we start getting paid. Yes. And once we, once any creator, this is with any creator. Yeah, it's not just once. Us. Once a creator passes a thousand views on a video, assuming their channel is already monetized. Yeah, which takes a bit which, of time. Which is not easy to do these days, especially. Yeah. So once that crosses, once a video crosses eleven, or sorry, one thousand views, then the creator earns one penny for every two views. And then... And then but you, then you have the, to share it. And then, yes, then you have to share it with YouTube, which it's their platform, we get it, but they take, what, 40 Well, here's... A, in theory, it's supposed to be about 40%. However, and they're, I, from what I understand, they are cracking down on this, but there are, there are people that use software that kind of gets around, you know, Things that they help. use ad blockers. They use ad blocker. It. They use ad blockers, and so yes, the rough math works out to for every two views a video gets, a creator earns about one penny, and then they share that one penny 
uh, on about a 60-40 split with the creator getting 40, given when you start factoring in things like ad blockers. Yeah. So we get one, I, I mean, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, I'm not, and again, I am not complaining. That's the thing. That's the thing you have to understand. Like none of, we're not saying this to complain and this is not get out your violins because yeah. obviously just, we have a, yeah. we have a large audience and we clearly are making it work. We just have, I just, I'm just trying to educate people that may not be familiar. Yeah. I was just having this in conversation with my dad earlier Yeah. Uh, because he had no idea how it works. And yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people in his position. And so it's, like Andrew's saying, we have a pretty, we have a respectable audience yeah. size, I mean, and um, that allows us to make a living. Mm -hmm. But there are creators, like his brother, as an example, he's still not, um, his he's channel not is still yet, it's not yeah. monetized. So he is literally. He's creating for free. Creating for free. Same with, uh, I, I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but our friend Nick at Movie AV Impulse, yeah. I don't know if he's monetized. I don't believe he's reached that milestone If he yet. isn't, and he, everything he d does is for free. Yeah. So it's important that you subscribe subscribe, yeah. and click the like button because when you click the like button, that helps to trigger the algor algorithm to help YouTube know people are liking this and they're going to maybe recommend it to more people. Yeah. Um, if you comment, that also helps. Yes. If you watch the whole video. That's, That's even, a huge help. Oh, yeah. Watch time is yeah. essential yeah. for a creator. So those people that have smaller channels, especially, do what you can to support them. Mm -hmm. And if they leave in a, a link in the description like we do, yes, we use affiliate links. We earn a small percentage. Mm -hmm. It's small, but it adds up over time. Yeah. So if we review something and say we like it, even if we don't like it. Yeah, if honestly, you, even if we don't like it. You click on it, it takes you to whatever site you end up on, you purchase something, we will earn a small p percentage of that s particular sale. Yeah. If you purchase something else that wasn't what we reviewed, we will earn a small percentage. Potentially. We potentially. could. Potentially. We, we could. could. Yes, we could. potentially. So doing those types of things really does help support creators yeah. bring you content that you're enjoying. So anyway, that's kind of how things are done. Yeah, but we, but and, and we don't hide from it. Like, we don't these hide are, from it. This is how this works. We will tell you exactly what it takes to run a channel, mm -hmm. and that's what it that's what it takes. And that's what I always find kind of hilarious when I hear things like what I'm assuming someone must have done something that I'm not aware of, but someone must have once again probably put out there in the ether that the only way any of this is possible, and it's like. We're living proof that if you show up, do the job, and keep keep everyone on the same page, and just share what it is that you know, and be honest with people, and and know your limitations, and know what you're good at and what you're not good at, and who your audience who is. your audience is, and you continue to just be consistent. Like we're living proof that it is possible that you can do all of this on the up and up. You know, that's the part of any critique or bogus criticism that we've ever gotten or that I've learned we've gotten where I'm just like, of all the things, like all you have to do is ask us, we'll tell you exactly how this works. <laughs> you know, it's not a secret at this point. I can tell you, I've seen more YouTube videos from other, crea not other creators in hi-fi, but like financial YouTube or or you know, investment YouTube where they're just like, this is how I made a million dollars on YouTube and they're just showing it to you. And it's like, it shouldn't be a secret. Now, I wish, I wish like the organic way that, you know, we just described to you, like we were getting those numbers, but obviously financial videos pay better than a soundbar video. Um, because credit card companies and banks and whatnot are targeting your audience are targeting those types of videos and they pay bigger ad spends than say yet another television. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of things that factor into it. There are, but at the same time, like you don't have to cheat or, or try and scam people in order to be successful. And if you find that someone is successful, don't automatically assume that it's because they're gaming the system, you know, and definitely don't put out accusations that 
you can't substantiate. And I'm saying this to anybody, anybody. I don't want you to go on anyone's comments on our behalf. And I don't, I don't want to know if other people are saying negative stuff about us. But understand that the few things that I've learned about other people doing in the past know that some of this behavior borders on slander. And I don't want anyone, anyone in our comments, anyone watching this to go and do any of that to anyone else just as much as I don't want it done to me. So don't do that. But you have to be aware that saying that people are like taking money under the table, that's like a really bad thing to say, especially if you can't prove it. And, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I just don't put yourself in that situation. All right, Mike, uh, sorry, Mike Rhodes. We've seen all your speakers, but your surrounds. What are they and where are they located in the main? Oh, Mike, you need to go to our, um, our room building playlist. Christy's gonna link to it in the, in the chat box. I'm adding you in yeah. just a second. If you watch our room build out playlist, we go over all of that. We show you what they are, we show you where, they play, where they're placed and how we've configured them. So we've got you, we've got you. Uh, Patrick, new to Hi-Fi and want to start with Rebel M16s and TA1, picking the Emotiva over AXR100 for expansion. Any thoughts? I think you're going to be fine. I really do. I think that's going to be a fun combo. Um, and the Emotiva, I think, is going to bring out the best in the M16s and vice versa. The M16s and the Emotiva probably going to jam pretty good. So I, I like that. I like that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to try and go a little bit rapid fire here because I, I realize we got we thought, sidetracked again. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, Alex, could you do a brief breakdown comparison between the Concept 50s and the R11s? The R11s replace the Concept 50s in your personal collection. I'll start with the last question first. Yes. Now, we still technically have the R, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Concept 50s. We do technically still have them. Um, there's some trade shows going on and things like that. And we obviously needed to hang on to the concept fifties for the Q acoustic 5040 review. So we could show you that comparison as well. Um, but the concept fifties are, I believe in the next couple of days or weeks when things die down with shows and stuff, those are also going to be getting returned to the manufacturer because it, it was, it's Christie's call to make the R11s. I mean, look, I want to hug these speakers 24 <laughs> seven. That's weird. <laughs> but these these are the R11s. And keep in mind, the Concept 50s are fantastic. They are so good. And they are half as much as the R11s. So please keep that in mind. But the R11s were the first speaker that after the Concept 50s where she was like, oh, I can hear these even better. Like I, dialogue intelligibility, clarity without res resorting to having to tweak dialogue modes and things like that was just that much better with the R11s. And that was the ultimate icebreaker right there. That was that was like, okay, boom, now we, now we know. Um, the R11s have more bass. Uh, they do scale better than the Concept 50s. The Concept 50s, they're still fantastic, but if you were to say, put the Concept 50s on steroids, I guess you could say you're gonna be in R11 territory, but the R11s are more precise top to bottom, and that's something the Concept 50s, in direct comparison, you start to really notice just the precision of the meta. So I hope that helps. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 808 Lub, Lub Labs? Lou, Lou Blab? Anyway, hi from Hawaii. Always enjoy watching your live streams during my lunch hour. The only thing about watching, I can't, I can't stop wanting more, was all set on Sonus Faber Lumina 5s until your Martin Logan F100 review. Hmm. It, it's going to come down to, with those two speakers, it's going to come down to whether or not you want that extra kick in the bass. Because the Martin Logans have that extra kick in the bass, whereas the Sonus Fobbers, obviously, they have more bass than, say, Lumina 2s or even Lumina 3s. But it doesn't have that kind of punch, that real oomph. So if you want to feel it, you want that little bit of kick, that rawness of it, the, the, the Logans all the way. But if you're like, no, I kind of want the bass to sit in, not that the bass doesn't sit in alignment, but I, I don't need that visceral quality all the time, then you probably, you know, you'd be pretty happy with the Lumina 5s. If it were me and I had to choose between the two, I really wish I could get some of the finishes of the fives on the Martin Logans, but I would still pick the Logans. That's just me. Uh, 
Dana B. Hi, I noticed that during your Forte 4 review, the speakers were wired with positive going to the lower post and negative going to the higher. Have you noted an improvement in bass doing it this way? None. None whatsoever. Uh, I, I had heard somewhere, I had a, uh, I think a viewer commented, could you do it? And I was like, you know what? In 20 years, I've never tried. I've never tried it. So I just tried it and uh, I didn't notice a difference at all. Um, and then I forgot that I left them that way. And it wasn't until I filmed that video and they were wired like that, that you all were like, what's he doing? And I was like, oh, I guess I should have explained myself. <laughs> but no, no, I, I don't, I did not notice or immediately hear or even down the road hear anything that I would classify as like, oh guys, here's the, here's the secret. Why aren't more people? No, nothing like that. It was truly, I think someone made a comment. I thought I'd give it a shot. And then I literally forgot I did it. Uh, June, hi from Oz. Your channel is the best out there. Keep it up. How soon your RZ70 review be available? Unfortunately, we haven't received it yet. I know that we are slated to get it. We have been told as much. I have no ETA for when we even are going to have it in-house. Um, but once we do, typically 60, 90 days. Um, but know that it's not even here yet. But the Pioneer, like I said earlier in the stream, the Pioneer 805, which is very heavily influenced or based on RZ50 or RZ70 and vice versa, um, that review is coming sooner than later. Uh, let's see here. Trans Travis Travis Sylvania. Huh. Any chance to review the CSS Typhoon speaker and or the Gal is it Galleon? Is it is that how you pronounce it? It's, it's Galleon. Gal yeah, what the is, amp. Oh, this it's is Jay's. Jay's and Thomas's. Thoughts on YouTuber blurring the lines between reviewer and designer. Personally, I think it's cool and exciting. Thanks. Okay. All right. Both Jay and Thomas have gotten in contact with us through all of the official means. I do not have any kind of like personal friendship or anything like that with either with either of those two people. Um, so we have made contact. Um, I have shared a, a brief phone call with with Jay because I just I honestly I didn't understand like how the division. Um, worked out between CSS and him like is this sort of like a hey I'm lending some branding to it and it's really a CSS or like did you really design blah 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 and he was very gracious in and explaining it to me um, because full disclosure I just I didn't find the announcement video that clear um, so I was grateful for that um, there is nothing firm on the schedule for either one of those but we have said that if samples were available, we would, we would welcome them into an evaluation to see if it's something that we wanted to cover. Um, it is now completely in their court what they want to do, okay? Um, from what I understand, at least with the CSS stuff, I think they're still in like a pre-order phase. Not to say that the product isn't real, it's very clearly real because reviews are starting to come out and they've been at a show. But I don't know if customer pairs are shipping just yet. And I do believe, um, I don't remember my exact quote, but I do believe that one of the things that I told Jay was, if we're gonna review it, I need to know that we are reviewing a, a, a true retail sample. You know what I mean? Um, and so he, he totally understood my why that would need to be and so, I suspect the next time that I hear about the CSS Typhoon would be because customers are also getting their speakers, in which case that's the speaker I would like to review. Uh, as for the blurring of the lines, it's, look, I, I'm not gonna tell anyone how to run their, their business, their channel, that's not how I do things, and that's, that's you just know me, that's not how it works. Um, it does get tricky. It does get tricky, but to be honest, I think for someone in Jay's position, it becomes trickier for him, not for people in my position. Um, because as far as I'm concerned, it's a speaker. It's a speaker, it's a speaker, it's a speaker. Um, I really don't care who makes it. If it's good, great. If it's not, you know we don't, we, we're not gonna be uh, uh, timid to tell you. 
Um, we'll go toe to toe with BMW, so I don't fear CSS or J or anybody like that. Um, that said, if this is a new business venture for Jay and this is like where he sees the future going, then great. You know, maybe he turns out to be one of the great speaker designers or he turns into, you know, Andrew Jones for the younger generation. I, I don't know. I don't know. And I, I would celebrate him either way. Um, but if he wants to remain, you know, a, a reviewer and a YouTuber and stuff, I think other brands have a decision to make. That's all. That's that's how I view it. I don't. I think he could still do whatever he wants to do, and he's free to do whatever he wants to do. But knowing that he's in the manufacturer space, if I'm another manufacturer, that could be weird, and so they're going to have to deal with that. Like I said, it's none of my business. Um, but the only reason I'm the only reason I'm answering the question the way that I am is understand that opportunities have come up to us as well. Like, do we want to? do this? Do we want to do that? And, it, and these are the philosophical existential questions that people in our position have to ask ourselves. And I have not come to any conclusions on my own. Clearly Jay or, or Thomas have come to their own. And, and as long as their head hits the pillow at night and they feel good about the decision they've come to, who am I to say it was the right or the wrong one? Because I'm not. It's not mine. It's not my decision. But it's a very interesting one because opportunities do present themselves. We haven't said yes to any of them. Um, but that's only because I, I personally haven't discovered the right answer for me yet. You know, Not to say that I'll even create a product. I don't know if I will or not. I don't know. About the time that I think I have to, I have to do it, you know, some brand <laughs> comes out with something. It's like, oh, look, it's got everything I would have wanted in it, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I guess if we just keep doing what we're doing and we keep bringing us regular bringing you guys regular content and keep holding brands accountable and keep recommending at least like hey if someone would just do this it'd be great i guess we're seeing the change that uh we hope for but that's that's kind of where we're at where that's where we're at with uh with that whole thing it's the balls in their court uh Steve decided to go 7.2.4 with NAD T778, was going to go with NAD C268 for missing two channel amp. Would I do a better, would I do better going XPL, XPA11 for all channels? I mean, honestly, at this point, if you're just trying to add the two channels, you'd probably get away with a base XA2. You know what I mean? I wouldn't, I mean, would an XPA 11 all channels with your NAD being a proce processor be good? Yeah, probably slam. But should you throw away half of the T778's promise, i.e. power, uh, you know, to do that? That's up to you. But if you're just trying to get, sorry, that was my ring hitting the table. If you're just trying to get two extra channels, why not try a Base A2 for like 400 bucks or whatever, 449, whatever they are, and see if that just doesn't work for you, you know, if that's just not enough, because it probably would be. Uh, let's see. Oh, boy. When will Andrew, Andrew and Christy sing a duet for us on the live stream? <laughs> Never. I don't think you want that. <laughs> Christy, ever solo DMP-A6 streamer. Thank you for letting us know what we uh, need to Google. I really appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Dash Pilot came late, but I'll ask a question. I'll ask a question next time. Keep up the awesome reviews, Christy. Thank you for. Oh, keep up the awesome reviews. Period. <laughs> Christy, thanks for keeping Andrew grounded. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't understand half of what he talks about. <laughs> well, that's that's that's, awesome. that's fair. That totally fair. That tracks. That totally. But fair. I, yeah, I get it. I mean, there's a lot of times I have to ask him, like, what are you even talking about? And I learn as much by our converse, the conversations that he and I have at the end of the end of his review portion when we're filming, you know, cause that still I, my favorite part. Oh, I love doing it. And yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for anybody that sticks around for that part. Um, but I'm learning right along with you guys, but I, I feel like I've, I've come, you have. Some, I've come some way. You, Oh yeah, you have. We were just having this conversation with her parents just before the live stream. Um, her dad was commenting because she, I was doing something else and Christy was walking them through the acoustics of the room and the build out. And, you know, her dad was saying like, 
it's amazing. Like, you know how all of this works. And I think I chimed in from the other room and I, I, I just said, yeah, what I've done, what I've learned in 20, 21 years, 22 years doing this job professionally, she's had to pick up on the, on the fly in three. And I, dollars to donuts, she can hold her own against quite a few people, quite a few people. And I, there's been some times, you know, if, if, if being an online persona or having an online persona wasn't often so darn toxic, I would push harder for her to do her, like her own review of something because I think she'd knock it out of the park. But I also, I don't wish the subjectivity of this job on anyone. I don't. You, you've got to be prepared for the worst in people to be hurled at you regularly. And if someone doesn't want to partake in that, I get it. I get it. And that's why when you guys are like, put her on camera, it is an individual choice. It is her choice. And we all need to back her up in that. And I just want to say something really quick about that. Um, to be honest, the, cause we have a lot of really, I have, I have a lot of really awesome supporters yeah. that, vouch for me that give me love every time we put out a video and know that I see you and it really does mean a lot to me. Yeah. Um, a lot of people will say that they wish there were more women voices in audio. And I know that a lot of people would like to see me go on camera to help maybe propel that forward. Mm -hmm. And I've thought about it, but as Andrew has said, you know, the reality is, is that you are subjected to so many subjective critiques, you know, so much of, of uh, some, a lot of comments we get have been absolutely nothing to do with the review. Yeah. And it's about a lot of other things. Yeah. And I get it. It's, it's human nature. I, I just feel that as a woman, it would happen probably 10 times more if I were on camera. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be good. It could be, it could be positive comments could be negative comments, but I fear that it would become so focused on the subjective about how my, my appearance mm -hmm. and then my message would in, ultimately end up being lost. And so I- Or compromised by what someone thought about appearance and things yeah, like that. So yeah, so I, I kind of feel that maybe you're more able to hear me by not knowing, not having to see my face and think about what I'm wearing, what my hair looks like, you know, do you know what I mean? It's Yeah, no, it's a really good point. It's so. a really good point. I mean, yeah, I, there's days I don't, there's, there's some days, man, I don't even want to do it because it's like, really? I just spent 40 hours on a video and you know, there's 26 comments about how I look tired or what's that on my face, you know, because, yeah, I got a blemish. And it happens, it happens. to everybody in, you know? in that puts himself on on YouTube. And, you mm -hmm. know, you're yeah, you're a public figure and a lot you of people will it. say you're asking for you're asking it or for what it, else yeah. do you expect? And I totally get it. Um, but if you've ever been in this position, I think think that's the only way you could really know what it's like and the only way you can have true understanding yeah. for what people that do put themselves out there face. So anyway, yeah. that's that. All right. Guys, I have just two more questions here and then we've already run a little bit long, but you know, you know, you know we don't mind. Uh, Andrew writes, is it just me or are center channels overrated? Three different systems all have a bump in upper mids that sound unnatural. Mains sound more robust. Am I wrong? I don't think center channels are, I don't think they're overrated. I think that um, some, I think there's probably more poorly designed center channels than good ones. Um, I think a lot of center channels may just, you know, well, put the speaker, I, I, the brands definitely care more than this, but there's definitely a price component that goes into a lot of center channels. And so as a result, yeah, they, they, they always kind of, eh. 
it's be a little bit different. Um, I also think that from a mixing standpoint, especially if you use dialogue aids inside of preamps or, or receivers, that can accentuate the problems of a center channel. While yes, it may make it more present and you'd be like, oh wow, that actor is like right there. Um, that's not necessarily the most natural. I've been a huge fan of phantom centers, but I am not saying that center channels, center speakers, center channel is a tongue twister. Center speakers, I don't think they're overrated, but I do think that finding a good one or finding the right one can be a, can be challenging. It can be challenging. Um, do I think that you need one for a home theater? No, no. And I mean, <laughs> we keep showing you the R11 or our, or our Cornwall 4s without a center. And trust me, I don't feel like we're missing anything. So um, yeah. Sinister, what are your thoughts on the Monitor Audio Gold 100s? If you don't like it, what would you recommend instead? Price range, 2,800 bucks. I think the monitor line top to bottom has just been great. There's not really anything. See, monitor audio for me, with the exception of the first bronze series that we had, because that was the first experience that I had with monitor audio. The bronze series for me was kind of like a Polk reserve line. You know, it's like it did a lot of things right and it was obtainable. And for that, it needs to be celebrated. Now, when you get into silver and gold, again, it still does a lot of things right and it still sounds great and I can make a case for them and I've never had necessarily a bad monitor audio experience. But monitor audio kind of fits into what we kind of went over in our last Focal review where it's like, this is a great option in a sea of you know options. This is a great option where there's obviously competition and, oh, hold on, we're about to. Hi there, my name is Nick Monger. We're alive and someone just knocked on our door. Um, so anyway, um, what was I saying? Yes, Monitor Audio, great solution. Are they the only option in any of their price brackets? Not necessarily. Um, Definitely, they have the potential to be leaders in their space, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if when people cross shop them against, say, Sonus Faber or BMW or um, uh, Focal even or Polk, you know, they don't um, they don't also um, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't also come away from those types of products uh, feeling very positive. Um, I, I apologize. This answer is kind of rambling because I, I what, are, what what is happening? Okay, I I think we're donating to somebody. <laughs> Just it was unexpected. So um, anyway, uh, so anyway, I think uh, hope that helps. I'm so sorry for the distraction. Um, sorry, it's just not every day that that happens, but. There he goes. There he goes. Uh, he is live. He is, he is a, a football player for a local team. Okay. Selling a gift card to raise money for their team. I, mean, oh. I just gave him some money. I didn't. Okay. I didn't even want this, but we'll give it to a neighbor or something. Anyway, helping helping, helping the local kids out. All right. Okay. Sorry about that, but I think somewhere in there was my answer. <laughs> Uh, JC, recommendation for a receiver, 3.1.2 living room setup. Uh, honestly, at that kind of a situation, I don't know what speakers you have, but I'm just going to assume right now my go-to sort of budget-friendly-ish receiver is the Onkyo RZ50. It is. If you don't need the preamp ounce, the AN1000 is also good from Sony. Um, should probably make that kind of a 3.1.2 really, really sing. Um, Joey the Dime, thoughts about the reviews and absolute sound and stereophile? Do you think the reviews are biased because of the advertising money being spent from the manufacturers? Oof. You know, guys, I, I, I know there's more questions, but I, I want to end on this. I want to end on this. So if you've, if you've asked a super chat, I think there's two more, but this, this question is going to go maybe five minutes. Um, look, can we... We all live in a world where we are aware that advertising helps make the world go around. We earn money through Google AdSense because 
you watched an ad. Now, we don't know what ad you watched. Um, and sometimes we are appalled at what has been put onto you know, our video and, and we, we will do what we can on our end to make sure that maybe that brand product or whatever doesn't appear again. But it does, nevertheless, it doesn't change the fact that if there weren't ads on our videos, we wouldn't earn anything. Does that make us biased? No, no. Um, does a brand, does a magazine that is obviously catering to an audience of stereo aficionados or home theater aficionados, should they only run ads that are from true third parties like lawnmowers? You know, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, it really comes down to the staff. I, the writers, not so much. The writers really are away from it. And I'm saying that as someone that was a managing editor for 12 or 15 years. My writers knew nothing about what was going on with the publishing side of things. As the managing editor, I was the stopgap. You know, I was the stopgap from the money people versus the writing people. And so my writers wrote. I know that our websites and our publications had ads, and I know that those people wanted positive things, but it never got past me to the writers. Okay? And so they got to write what they wrote. And I will say, in my experience, this is just me. I'm not saying there aren't anecdotal stories that someone else could see this video five days from now or five years from now and being like, well, here are the receipts about how that didn't happen. Um, from my perspective and in my experience as a managing editor, I have only had one, one real run-in with the money people as far as like, hey, we need this to happen. And to that, I didn't do it. And it's going to come down to the staff and who is at the helm of some of these publications. Um, I didn't stand for it. And I know there are places out there that don't. I can't say if it's Stereophile or Absolute Sound because full disclosure, I don't read those publications. Um, I used to. I used to read them. Um, I really wanted to work for both of them, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I have other reasons not to want to patronize their businesses, and it has nothing to do with their credibility. You know, it has absolutely nothing to do with their credibility. It has everything to do with the fact that when I was coming up, um, they weren't very nice to me. And not to say that they had to be nice to me, but as someone who's, you know, young and trying to learn a craft and trying to learn from their peers or trying to learn from their, their idols, you know, um, they were kind of shit. And, you know, when this channel started to grow and, and has grown and, you know, not bragging, but we, we reach a bigger audience than them. Um, I still wanted to have connections and I, with them, I still wanted to be able to, you know, pick their brains and stuff. And there was a very popular, there was a writer, popular writer who unfortunately passed. And I knew, I, I knew of him. We had crossed paths and trade shows and whatnot. And he was a respected guy and I respected him immensely. And, um, when he passed, I wanted to share my condolences. And when I went to go do that, I, I was treated to a barrage of, you know, comments in this, this video about how, what, like a horrible person I was and how these people at the real, at the magazines and whatnot, you know, would have, you know, they, they wouldn't stand for someone like someone like me. And so I, I really felt like it wasn't my place then to say anything. Um, because they made their feelings, you know, I guess their true feelings known. Um, and so that, that bugged me, but I don't, I honestly don't think it's smart and it's not a growth tactic as a human being to like make your life about questioning other people's, if that makes sense. Let people do what they do. Let people be who they are. Let them run their business, how they want to run their business. And 
you just decide. Like this world we live in now is so democratized as far as like, hey, if you don't like what I have to say and you feel that someone else is going to say it better or say things the way you want to, to, to hear them, you're just go do that. You know, it's it's so easy. We, we're not in the era anymore of like there's only five places to get information. There's 500,000, 5 million, 50 million places to get information. So the need to constantly like belittle or try and tear other people down in order to make yourself look like you're higher up or more credible or more credible it, I, in my experience and I'm not talking about in hi-fi I'm just saying my experience in life the people that have gone out of their way to try and sell me on their credibility their honesty or their generosity are the type of people that historically I have had come to find out were none of those things. Yet I've run into people that I wouldn't have given a second look to only to discover like that person just wrote a million dollar check uh, to, you know, this, this arts program. And they were wearing cargo shorts and flip flops and didn't want their name mentioned at a charity auction. And they were the biggest whale, quote, whale in the room. Um, and to me, I want to be that guy. Like, I want to be cargo short guy, you know, because you shouldn't do anything expecting an outcome. You should do it because you want to do it. And I firmly believe that no one wakes up in the morning or no good person wakes up in the morning to deceive or do a bad job or 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 you know this job's hard enough without all of the conspiracy theories without all of the honestly the 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 unsubstantiated bs that I think people can see through it. I hope they can see through it, you know, when, when they're being fed a line of goods. But, yeah, I... I think, um, I feel like YouTube creators fall under a greater, um, greater, fall under greater scrutiny than the, like, print mags oh, and absolutely. online mags. And I think it just comes down to that, the fact that your people are more used to, yeah. um, you know, seeing ads in a magazine. And it's kind of like, I was just having this conversation with my dad earlier. I was like, well, you know, sometimes we have people who watch the channel and they really don't like the idea of any of us making any money. Yeah. You know, they don't want to have to watch, sit through an ad and they don't like to know that you got a product for review for free from the company, even though nine times out of 10, it goes straight back. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, and things like that. And I'm like, so I would have to ask you, my dad, yeah. who at one point in his life was very much somebody like someone who would watch YouTube. Like if he actually watched YouTube, mm -hmm. I think 30, 20 years ago or something, he would have watched this channel if it had been around mm -hmm. um, because he was really in, is it was into hi-fi at the time. But I'm like, would you be upset if you saw an ad running you know, and he was like, well, no, or, or I think maybe I first asked, like when you watch TV, like when you're watching a baseball game on TV and they go to commercial break, like, do you riot? <laughs> yeah. Do you phone up the MLB and be like, what, what's with the Ford ad, yeah. man? <laughs> you know, and must I don't, be nice. And I think be you getting ob paid millions, <laughs> you know, and of course, obviously <laughs> no one really loves ads and you know, you, you, you maybe use it to run to the restroom or something, but you accept it as just kind of a fact of life. Yeah. And for whatever reason, the YouTube on YouTube, it's just doesn't seem accepted yet, you know, and I would love to see that change because yeah. we, we can't continue to bring stuff like bring you things like this content like this, unless we can earn a living somehow, you know? Yeah. I mean, as, as much as we enjoy it, we do need to put a roof over our head and whatnot. So, yeah. And I, yeah. I kind of got someone, on Instagram asked a question similar to this not a, a few days ago and I and I just said 
from my perspective, I was I was raised to 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 look at life this way, at least when it comes to like business and like milestones. If there is someone that you see that has the life, the career, um, hell, even like the car, you know, something even go superficial, the speaker, the car, the, you know, whatever that you're like, Oh, you know, wow. I, I like that too. I want that for myself. You don't get it by trying to take it from them. You get to where you want to go by befriending them and letting them teach you. And that's one of the things that like, I actually really love about YouTube because while we were growing our channel, you know, when we really started it like three years ago because we lost our jobs, um, I guess maybe I didn't make a big enough deal about it or we never created content, but we were learning from other YouTubers and not in the hi-fi space, um, but we were learning from other YouTubers, like how to do this job. And I, we, I turned to, you know, real estate kind of YouTube people. We turned to interior design YouTube people and not to rip them off, but just to go, look, they're where I want to go. And so how can I be their supporter, their fan, legitimately their supporter, their fan? How can I, what can I glean from them? without taking advantage of them, without monopolizing them, or, you know, while, be, while being truly supportive. And I see it happening all the time with other genres of YouTube. I see it all the time. It's insane. Like how, like how just getting along everyone is. So that part always bugged me in the last three years where it just seems like every three to four months, you know, we'll get comments or, you know, someone will be like, hey, do you want to know? Do you not want to know? But so and so or so a group of people are saying this about you. And it's just like, how, how can everyone in like Marquez Brownlee's space seem to really like each other and be friends? They like genuinely seem to like when they bump into each other at like a, a YouTube event, they're like high fives and all of that. And yet when it comes to this niche on niche hobby of hi-fi and home theater, it's like, it's like so survival of the fittest. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Like this hobby is not getting bigger and we're just eating it. We're eating ourselves alive from the inside out. And why anyone would want to attack someone else unless they have done something truly, truly out of bounds. And there have been people that have stepped way out of bounds. And that's when I don't bite my tongue. But just, Andrew must be getting paid. Really? Really? That's the low-hanging fruit? Really? Well, I just kind of think like still we still yeah, still 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 we're still going there. I it's don't. It's like know. every month we do a live stream, and it feels like this question comes up, and then every month we're like, we make the equivalent of a penny every two views. We have to share forty or sixty to forty percent of it with YouTube. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys grab a calculator, just do the math. Yeah, you can or Google how much you know. You yeah. can Google how much do most, some reviewers yeah. make or whatever with a channel our size. Honestly, it just depends on who's watching, what ads are being run, yeah. and you know those kinds of things, and how many views we get. Because there's things called the CPM, and then there's the RPM. RPM. And, and the RPM is what we get, because every, YouTube gets a take of everything. Yeah. And it's, it's a sizable chunk. So anyway, yeah. just enjoy it. Try not to worry about if you know who's doing on, on the take or who's not. Yeah. Um, and use, a, just use common sense. Just use common sense. And, and ask if, us. You can ask us if you are concerned, and hopefully we'll at least alleviate something like that for for you. you that's know? The, that's the most beautiful. Th that's that's the point I want to end on, and this is important for all of the hate videos that I've been made aware of, and unfortunately, a handful of them over the last three years I've had to watch. Um. The one consistent thread that every single one of them has 
is not one of these people, not one, has ever emailed me or called for, a, for comment or anything. The only person who, the only time I've ever gotten a call was to call to invite me on a show in order to argue, you know, another thing that someone else did. And I was like, I'm not going to participate in an in a argument to drum up views for this other thing. That's not, no, I don't want anything to do with that person and what they did to my wife. And we're not going there. And I'm not going to participate in a live debate to hash it out. Um, but minus that one time, no one's ever asked me for comment. No one's ever reached out and said, hey, do you, how do you make this work? Because I would tell you. And there's people in this chat that know that I would tell you. Sorry, Nick, I'm going to put you on the spot. But Nick DM'd me on Instagram like, hey, how do I grow a channel? And I just told him. You know, when Randy was starting out, he wrote me an email like, hey, how do I do this? And I told him. Now he's doing his own thing. He has found his own secret sauce. And that's awesome. We all need to find our own secret sauce. But if you just ask, we're pretty transparent. You know, I, I don't know how else to say it than that. So anyway, I guys. I have a yeah. I have a couple of, I have a couple more. Um, so no more super chats. So yeah, so, because otherwise we can't. We'll never be able to get off of this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for your work. I have two. Uh, sorry, long winded. Uh, thanks for your work. I have two Pioneer towers with one subwoofer side speakers. Two ears less than two meters. Can't step back. Are my speakers too close? Uh, um, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, if you're finding that things aren't coalescing, you may need to push your speakers closer together. Um, or if it sounds like you're only hearing one speaker, then you might need to pull them further apart. But your near field listing, that's, you, that is a thing. That is a thing. So no, no. I mean, yeah, yeah you're probably okay. Uh, Wicked Plumber, thank you for becoming a member. Really. Oh, Wicked Plumber gifted oh my. like 10 or something yeah. um, memberships to people. Wicked Plumber is, he's our goat today. Yep. He's our, he's our, what is, what is Philip DeFranco say? The Banff badass mother effer of the day. <laughs> uh, sorry, Philly, Philly D, but uh, gifting 10 memberships is, that's, that's pretty so clutch. Nice. We love so, that. So thank you. Um, speaking of which, maybe one of these 10 members, maybe we need to repost the two or three garage sale things that still have not gone out the door. Um, we do member garage sales. Maybe you guys can go through the member posts in the community section that you will now be able to see and see that there's a couple of items from our personal collection that unfortunately we're, we run out of room and uh, need to move them down the road. So opportunity. Um, uh, let's see. Just wanted to recommend two artists for you guys to check out. Joy Crooks, Skin and Little Sims. I think you guys will like. Well, thank you. And you know what? That's a recommendation for the class. It really is. Um, but thank you. We will check those out. Promise. Uh, last, I think. Considering changing out my Denon 3808 CI and Clip Synergy speakers, Will I notice a difference besides a lighter wallet? <laughs> to be honest with you, I am not familiar with either of those two lines or products, so I cannot say if you're going to notice a difference. I So I'm just going to give you my usual response, and that is if you if you truly don't have a problem with what you have now, and you're just getting the itch to try something new because you're getting antsy and the world makes it seem like you have to get something new, don't get anything new. Enjoy what you have. Maybe buy a couple of movies you haven't seen yet and just take it in that way. Don't spend money if you don't have to. Um, and that is it. That's it. That's it. I think I'm caught up. It says live. I see nothing else. All right. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this two and a half hour 
uh, live stream. We do it every third Thursday of the month. And, you know, these are turning out to be some of my favorites. Uh, I do want to give a thanks. Um, I'm going to pop it up here, guys, in case you didn't catch us in the first 30 minutes. But this live stream was graciously sponsored by Cambridge Audio and their new podcast on Spotify, Made by Music. There's three episodes out there right now. It's really cool. There's a link to um, it in the description. Link in the description. It, it, if you guys are looking for something to listen to after this, you're, you're driving or whatever, this is pretty cool stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm liking what I'm what I'm hearing so far, but I haven't listened to everything yet. Uh, but thank you to Cambridge for um, sponsoring this live stream. And that's it for us. That's it for us. So we will see you next month. But well, first of all, we're going to see you Sunday. We've got a brand brand new video for you on Sunday. Um, but until next time, you guys know the drill. As with everything, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again for all of the great questions. If there's anything we missed, I don't think we did, but if there's anything we missed, we'll circle back and we'll, we'll, we'll get you answers. Um, but thank you, thank you, thank you. And see you on the next video. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys.